suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15, 2020, order imposing strict restrictions on the number of people that may gather in one place. I don't think I will do. These are, uh, excuse my, all right, do a better job now. Good to see you, Ed. All right, that's better. Okay. Um, and the governor's order of March 15, 2020, order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen or and or watch the meeting may do so either online via the town's online demand video broadcast on cable t television at channel 191 or dial into the meeting at phone number 774-304-1455, enter uh, 1428 pound for the, uh, for the meeting number and 12345, the access code. This phone number is only active for the public meeting during public meetings. Uh, no in-person attendance of the meeting of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. In the event that we are unable to do so we will post the, ta um, the town's website, an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Now, I'm also going to read the opening statement for public hearing so that we have that in the docket. In the interest of saving town time, excuse me, Service Conservation Commission will hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland water body or resource area and or within the 200 foot buffer zone to a wetland water body or resource area in accordance with Mass Wetland Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and associated regulations and the Town of Service Wetlands Bylaw and associated regulations. We will not be reading the newspaper ad. Prior to the meet, meeting, the first hearing for each uh, project, the applicant is to submit proof of notification to the abutters within 200 feet of the subject property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public will not be hearing, and the public hearing will not be open. Additionally, prior to the start, of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. All right. Uh, that said, we are now to a quorum check, and we have a full committee. So that's great. Um, as far as committee updates, there has not been a CPA meeting. David, I don't know how, how the trails have been doing. Yeah, we had a trails meeting uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, at 4 o'clock. Um, the first item is for Becky. Uh, Becky, Sinuosity is going to flag the Riverlands um, within the next two months, probably September or October. And so um, Brandon would like to have an interface with you relative to being available for a couple of hours. And he has... Um, a definitive date from sinuosity as to when they're coming out to actually do that flagging so instead of having to spend hours of time out there it should be able to get done more quickly if it gets organized like that so brandon would like you to contact him relative to that okay item number two this conference um, will now be recorded i made mention of the fact at our previous meeting that um a trails committee was putting four foot trolls out 
on the trails and starting a new game in order to be able to get some youngsters involved in the process. Uh, unfortunately, it has taken a bit longer to produce the four foot tall three trolls. And so it will be ready by the end of the month and in the ground by the end of this month. And so Facebook and the Frost and the Trails website will all have information relative to what's going on with the trolls. And if any of the members have a chance, they should go out and see them because I got to tell you, they are really something. Um, last but not least, um, the National Honor Society has agreed as part of their public service um, hours that they will start working on the trails. Their first day will be from 8 to 11 on August 26th. If anyone wants to join in the uh, eight-foot separated people doing work on the trails, the um, National Honor Society from Tantasta will be uh, working on these about every other week. And they've already gone through about three hours of training with the trails committee relative to how to um, do this that's it for the Trails Committee. They'll meet in another month. Great. Uh, Lakes Advisory, anything there, Eric? No, no meetings. No, no meetings. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes for August 4th, uh, 2020. I have a motion. I'd like, make, I'd like to make a motion that we approve those minutes of August 4th. David Barnett. Uh, this is Stephen. I'll... Stephen Chittister, I'll second, but I have a change to make. All right, go ahead. Make the Stephen, why don't you give us a change? Okay, I'm on the fifth page, it's under the um, 27 Ladd Road uh, public hearing. Okay. Um, it lists, it says under public, S. Chittister, a butter address the commission. I'm not, I'm not a legal abutter. So I just moved to strike the, the word abutter. Okay. No problem. Any other uh, comments? All in favor? Eric? Eric Gaspar approved. Stephen Chidester? Stephen Chidester approved with a change. David Barnacle? David Barnacle approve with the change. And Steve Halterman. Steve Halterman, I approve. And I will abstain because I only attended part of the meeting. So um, rather than get caught, I read the part that I was there for and it looked fine. So, but that's a, irrelevant, so I'll abstain. All right, now on to um, walk-ins, Becky. Yeah, we do have a walk-in. I believe we have, um, Justin Stelmach on uh, to give a quick presentation on a potential project that's going to be coming in in the near future. Uh, Jeff, I believe they um, have a presentation, so if you could give them the ability to share their screen, that'd be appreciated. All right. Who is it? Who is it? It's it's under John Stelmach. Okay. I think you're on, John. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm Justin Stelmach, and my father, John's kind of in the background here. Um, we're from Holmes by Emerson out of Auburn, Mass. Um, we wanted to come in and meet with the commission. Uh, we know this is the first time that we've ever met anyone on the board, and, and you guys have met us. Um, We've been into planning board and with a conceptual plan or with this conceptual plan already. Uh, and what this is, it's a 55 and older manufactured housing community. Um, there's right now as the concept stands, there's 65 lots. Um, and we, this is all based off of what would happen is um, Matt Sausick would have to build his road first and, and get approvals for his road, which he's in the process of doing that. We would then be purchasing one one lot from his subdivided road to then build our 55 and older community. Um, what we're showing on here, it's roughly 42 acres of land that we would be purchasing. That's still, well, the final number is still up in the air um, that we'll, we'll work out with Matt. Uh, but 
it's roughly 19 acres of developable land and 23 acres or 55 percent of green space or open space which is what's shown in the green on this plan um, all of the work right now that's shown with this concept would be out of the 50 foot buffer uh, we wouldn't need any grading or or tree clearing in that buffer uh, also right now mcclure is showing five storm storm basins uh, those are again just concepts but they're they're within the contours of the land that's there now so we would not be dumping water into one central location to then be drained out of all the impervious surface uh, we've kind of let the water and, and the roadways follow the natural contours of the land um, so i know pete, pete from mcclure is on the, the line as well i don't know if pete do you have anything else to add in regards to the storm water no i think that pretty much covers it okay so we're, we're here before uh, in front of the uh, commission tonight just to get your initial reactions and uh, feedback on this plan before we move to the next steps. All right, well, you know, obviously site delineation, wet, wetland delineation is the key. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, else, what further we could say at this point in time, if anybody has a comment. Well, we, we, we can also go back in our records and pull up a previous um, delineation that was done 2008-2009 for a previous uh, attempt at um, developing this property. Mm -hmm. and, and that right now on plan is, is what McClure used. Um, obviously, we know as we go through this process, um, we're in contract with McClure to do a whole new land rat on this section um, that we'd be purchasing from that. And, um, going through the whole process all over again and, and starting fresh. So for clarity, uh, Matt would produce the road and you guys would produce the, um, the, the houses on the, on the lot? That's, yeah, right now, I beat, again, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Matt's subdivision road is set up for four lots that he would be trying to get approval for, two residential and two commercial. So we would be purchasing one of those residential lots. When you say one residential lot, um, would that how many how many um, houses would you be able to put on that one residential lot? Would so this conceptual plan shows 65 lots. Um, working with Gene and the planning board, uh, we would actually fall under what is in the bylaws as a trailer coach park. Um, Nowadays, it's a, it's a manufactured housing community, so it would all remain private land. Um, our, our section would be buying from that. We would maintain all of the roads, all of the catch basins, stormwater, um, portions of it, all of the sewer, the water, the electric, all of that would stay private, and we would maintain all of that, and the residents would be paying a monthly lot fee to cover that cost. So there's really no burden on the town besides emergency vehicles. Uh, so within all of the trailer coach park guidelines um, in working with McClure, we've, we've come up with the 65 lots on this conceptual plan. Any Mr. Chairman, I've got a quick question. Yeah, Steve Halderman. Uh, where's the uh, wastewater going to go? That's We're working on that right now. Um, it's all city sewer. Um, I know Pete and Matt uh, are in talks with the town of Southbridge uh, to figure out as far as Matt's whole road and the flows that would go into the town sewer and then would eventually flow to Southbridge. So Pete, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, basically um, the idea would be to gravity sewer down to basically um, the low point, which is in that light blue area, um, there'd be a small private pump station to pump it back up to the subdivision road, which you can see on the right side there, which would then gravity feed down to Main Street, Route 131, tie into the town sewer, which in that part of town flows to Southbridge. Where would the Stur water come from? The Sturbridge, the Sturbridge uh, pipe, uh, that goes to uh, that part of our sewer system that goes to Southbridge. That's what you're saying. Correct. Yep. Uh, 
uh, in the water. We're, we're, again, trying to figure that out right now. Uh, likely be tying into the Sturbridge water, um, again, right on Main Street, Route 131. Not that it's a conservation commission issue, but how's that discussion going? Uh, like, well, for instance, right now we have a watering ban that we're pretty uh, short of water right now. I'm just wondering. Uh, and I say it's not a conservation commission question. Right. It's a Steve Halterman question. Um, you know, the, the water department claims they have plenty of um, supply. It's, it's more of the pressure in that part of town. Um, there might be a need for a, a water booster station or something like that. But as far as the supply of water, the, you know, the town claims they have plenty for this entire development. That's interesting. Maybe I won't be so afraid of watering my flowers then if there's plenty of water. <laughs> okay, so in terms of stormwater, which is a, a Conservation Commission issue, so I, I looked at this plan earlier today, and I see that you do have some uh, retention, detention, some kind of ponds. Uh, so this is going to be uh, uh, all the stormwater is going to be retained on this parcel. I think you meant parcel when you were saying lot. You've got 60 lots on a parcel. But go ahead. Uh, yep. Tell me about the stormwater. I'll, I'll let Pete answer that. He could probably answer that question better than I could at this point. Yeah, so basically we would try to uh, maintain existing flow paths, um, volumes and, and whatnot to the certain wetland areas. And there's a couple different wetland areas on site. Um, but, you know, the stormwater is going to have to meet the state stormwater eggs for recharge and treatment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but likely just due to the size of the development, there's going to be a... a five or six different stormwater basins that are going to be used to help treat and infiltrate and attenuate those those peak flows. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting. That, that'll come across our desk. And one other question that has, again, it doesn't have anything to do with the Conservation Commission, and I'm sorry to take up our time, but did it not look like the driveway to this complex this kill road and route 131 are kind of all right in exactly the same place or did i just look at that too quickly i mean the yeah the road or driveway going up to these sites i mean that's okay it's it's just a yeah, I'm not, question and not i'm not 100 percent um, following okay where does the road that goes up to this, this uh, subdivision, where does it come out on Fiskill Road? Uh -oh, so <clears throat> it'll come out on, on 131, so it, it won't tie into Fiskill Road exactly, but the property does front on both 131 and Fiskill Road. So basically- What does exactly mean? Um, the road will tie into, um, if you drive down that part of town next to the gas station, there's a there's an old logging trail that would be restored, and then about 100 feet past that logging trail, there's a paved apron, and that paved apron would be the entrance to the main subdivision road. Right. But this, uh, what's this, um, to the top of the plan, this uh, road that oh, extends yeah. off right there? So that, where does that go? That is right. in Southbridge. So that would be an emergency exit into South, into Southbridge. Oh, okay, that's in Southbridge. Westwood Road in Southbridge. Okay. So a curb cut. Oh, boy. Yep. Okay. I, I, uh, Dave, I'm with you. I remember this project. I was on the planning board when that other project came through. And there was some real issues. But anyway, that's planning board stuff. All right. Well, thank you for your information, guys. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, and no more questions from the board. That's the input we can give you at this point in time. Well, we look forward to moving forward and 
in meeting with the commission again when we bring in uh, our next set of plans. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Becky, where do you want to go? To uh, are we at six fifteen? We are, right? Yes. You want to go to six Fairground Road? Yep. Uh, Jeff, can you allow me to share my screen, please? I beg your pardon. Yes. Yep. All right. Six Fairgrounds Road. Request for determination of applicability. S. Riley Property uh, One applicant. Construction of a deck and installation of a fence, deck, and fence. Hold on. China. Got too much on my little screen here. <clears throat> All right, so this is um, this is an RDA for the construction of a new deck and fence at a single family property on Cedar Lake. Uh, we did receive the abutter notifications and the receipt of legal ad. Uh, we did perform a site visit. Uh, the deck is approximately 80 feet or so away from the resource area and the fence will leave a setback um, from the resource area as well, about 10 to 15 feet or so. I have no concerns with the project. Um, like I said, it's outside of the 50-foot no new structures uh, setback, and the fence will not impede wildlife. For this, I'd recommend approval, and for the determination, this would be a positive 2B. Uh, we're not doing a resource area delineation here. And negative 3, uh, subject to Wetlands Protection Act with conditions, and a positive number 5. Uh, for conditions, I just do minor conditions. Um, any material excavated for installation is not deposited within a resource area, either removed from the site or stabilized. And then just note that on the site there was um, a brush pile slash fire pit area near the lake, which was talked about being relocated. I would just add that in the um, letter for you. And that's it. I believe, we, right. I believe we do uh, have the property owner on, so I'm not sure if they want to add anything at this time. Sharon, are you on here? I saw her on here. Uh, yes, I, I don't have anything else to add. Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody on the committee? Steve, you went out and saw it, right? Yeah, I was on site and uh, very, very cooperative uh, landowners. I wish everybody in town was like them. Uh, very cooperative, open to all, the, of all, all of our suggestions and uh, looks like a good project. I would approve this. I also was on site. It's all, the deck is in place and it, everything is cleanly done and um, I would recommend approval also. But should we not be talking about this after a motion has been made, Mr. Chairman? Well, I was just going through. We can not We can do that if you'd like to make a motion. But, I, you know, I figured we'd have a little familiarity with it before we did that. And then public comment. And indicating how you're going to vote might be two different things. Yep. Okay. So Any? I'll make a motion that we approve of the uh, request for determination for six fairground road. Ed. The exceptions note by the agent. Do we have to take comments from the public first or no? Yes. Oh, but we should probably close the public hearing first. Do I, so there, do I have a second? Oh, I want to make a, a different motion. Okay, go ahead. Make the, make a motion. Let, let's close the let's see if there's any comments from the public first. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. Fine Somebody me. looking at that cheat sheet? Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holly did a great job. Yeah. Somebody get that yeah. cheat sheet. I know. Hi, is there any public on the phone I'm for afraid. Six Fairgrounds Road? Okay, no. Nope. Nope. All right. Mr. Barnacle, would you Can we close the public hearing? Do I have a second? I'll second that. Steve Halderman. Steve Halderman seconds. Discussion, anyone? Eric. 
All right. Seeing no discussion, uh, let's go to vote. Mr. Barnacle, how do you vote? David Barnacle, in favor. Steve Alderman? Steve Halterman, in favor. Eric Gaspar? Eric Gaspar, in favor. Steve Chidester? Steven Chidester, in favor. And Ed Goodwin, in favor. Motion that we approve, Mr. Chairman. Add the no. request for determination on 6 Fairground Road. This is David Barnacle. Sounds good. I have a second. I'll Eric second Gaspar, it. Steve second. Alderman. <laughs> Steve Alderman, second. I'm waiting I for knew you, if Eric. I, waited, I knew if I waited long I'm, enough, you'd start talking. <laughs> and um, You get the next one. So, Becky, we've got... Um, your recommendation here, so we would go with that. Um, negative, you know, number three. Positive two B. No, it's a positive yeah. five, negative three. Yeah, and positive two B. Sorry. Positive two B, right? All right. Anybody have any discussion? All in favor, Mr. Barnacle. Steve Barnacle in favor. Mr. Halterman. Steve Halterman in favor. Mr. Chidester. Stephen Chidester in favor. Mr. Gaspar. Eric Gaspar in favor. Ned Goodwin in favor. Thank you very much. We are now or a, a little bit ahead, Vic. You, you got a three minute or? Before we do that, I have one item that I'd like to bring up relative to procedure. Uh, at the last meeting, we sort of, um, in my opinion, may have um, gotten things a little bit screwed up. We had two items, um, and we dealt with two items on the agenda at the same time. And that, to me, doesn't seem right, since we have to take a separate vote on each one of the items is my opinion that we should be addressing each one of the items separately. Once we have voted upon one item, then we take up the other item. And so I would like to caution us to do that tonight, since the same two items are going to be coming up. Okay, that's a good point. And now you Becky, do you have anything you want to do for two minutes? Sure. We have um, orders of conditions, which I sent the drafts to you. You could probably quickly go through those. Uh, we have um, DEP file number 300-1065. This was for 159 Walker Pond Road. It was the Department of Conservation and Recreation approved at the last meeting. And I sent that draft to you. I don't know if you have any questions or if concerns. No. Any any questions or concerns from the board? Looks good to I'm me. Here. Steve Halterman. All right. I, I'm not seeing any, Becky. Okay. Do you want to um, uh, vote to approve? approval? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How do you vote, Mr. Halterman? I, I vote to approve. Mr. Barnacle. Steve Halterman. Even Barnacle votes to approve. Mr. Chidester? I vote to approve, Stephen Chidester. Mr. Gaspar? Eric Gaspar, I vote to approve. And Ed Goodwin, and I vote to approve also. All right, next All right, we have... All right, now we are at... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. All right. I was going to say we're... Um, no, one minute. We're close enough so we can go on to our 6.30... Um, 229 uh, Podunk, request for determination of applicability, uh, D. Brunel, A.H. and D.B. Custom Homes, applicant, M. DePinto, Three Oaks Environmental, representative single family home um, with a well and septic. Okay. We have the applicant. Marianne DePinto's here. Can you hear me? Oh, hold on. We have um, Marianne DePinto. She's on the um, line calling in, so we're going to put her volume up here. Can you here. hear us, Marianne? <laughs> yes, I can. I can hear you fine. Okay. I uh, 
tried to get in through the uh, through Zoom or whatever it is, and I had no luck. Why? When I clicked on live, February came up. Oh, I, I couldn't get to this meeting, so I'm on the phone. Okay. Um, no problem. All right. Yeah. Real, real quick, uh, we filed for the request for determination. Um, everything is outside the 200 feet except the reserve area for the septic system. So we thought we'd you know, do, the re do the request for determination uh, for that area in the event it, so whoever ends up with the house knows that anything beyond what's proposed now, it needs to go back before the Conservation Commission if there's ever a failure in the septic system and they need to file. Great. I'll just add, um, we do have uh, the butter notifications and the legal ad received for this. Um, as Mar Marianne summarized, there's there's no work uh, currently proposed within either uh, the state or the local buffer zone. Um, I was going to add that within the determination, um, I would recommend adding language as she discussed, just letting uh, any future property owners know that if there ever was a need to come back for the reserve, that they would have to file for that. Um, and with this, because of where the location of the reserve is shown at the 100 foot buffer zone, um, it definitely would be something that would be approvable in the future. If it was something that was right at the wetlands edge and wouldn't meet Title V, I think that would be a, a different story for this development. But at this time, um, I'd, I'd recommend um, approval for the determination. This one would be a negative number one. Uh, the area is not with um, it's not within an area subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the buffer zone. And then this would be a negative number six. The area work is not subject to the Sturbridge Wetland Bylaw. Okay. Um, discussion. Eric, any any comments? I'm good. You good? No comment. Steven? No comment. Steve? No comment. Looks good. Mr. Barnacle? And I guess it's time to make a motion to close the public hearing. All right. We got to do public comment. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, we should ask for the public at this point. Yes. Is before there, we close the public hearing. Is there any public comment for 229 Podunk Road? Any public on the line for 229 Podunk Road? Okay, doesn't, no, no comments. Hearing none, I move that we close the public hearing for Eric Gap. 229 photos. Eric Gap, five seconds. All right, discussion? Anybody uh, would like to speak on the subject? All in favor? Mr. Barnacle? David Barnacle approves. Steve Alderman. Steve Alderman, I approve. Eric. Eric Gaspar, I approve. Stephen. Stephen Chittister, I approve. And Ed Goodwin, I approve. So now we go to make a motion that we approve request for determination for 29 votes. I have a second. Eric Gaspar, second. Eric Gaspar, second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, oh. Steve, Steve, Stephen Chidesta, how do you vote? Stephen Chidesta in favor. Eric Gaspar. Eric Gaspar in favor. Steve Alderman. Steve Alderman in favor. Dave Barnacle. Dave Barnacle in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. All right. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, before we move on, Becky, we're getting we're getting a lot of feedback on your line. Yeah, we're going to turn the volume down. What's going on behind? Yeah, we had to leave it on for the public comment because Marianne was on there, but we just turned it down because she's done now. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, thank you. Now we are not to 6:45. We are at 6:35. So back bottom, we. Yep. Uh, we can go back for signatures. So we have uh, okay. DEP file number 300-1066. This was for Eight Picker Road, which was approved at the last meeting. Um, I did provide you with a draft of those orders of conditions. I didn't know if you had any um, comments or questions. 
Comments or questions? Mr. Barnacle, any? <clears throat> Mr. Haldeman? No comments. Nice job, Becky. Thank you. Mr. Gaspar? Yep, I'm good with it, too. And Steve Chudester? Uh, Stephen Chudester, no comment. And Ed Goodwin, no comment. All right. Can you vote that to approve? Being said, I'll vote to approve. Eric? Approve. Eric Gaspar, in favor. Stephen Chidester? Uh, Stephen Chidester, approved. Dave Barnacle? David Barnacle, approved. Steve Halterman? Steve Halterman, approved. And Ed Goodwin, abstain. Okay. Um, Want to go on to 70 Westwood, Beck? Yep, uh, 70 Westwood, this was DEP file number 300-1035. This was a request for an amendment for 70 Westwood Drive, which was um, approved at the last meeting. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Mr. Barnacle? Good Barnacle in favor. Steve Halterman? Steve Halterman in favor. Eric Gaspar? Eric Gaspar in favor. Stephen Chidester? Stephen Chidester in favor. And Ed Goodwin abstains. All right, Becky? All right, we have... Um, we have... We have some requests for certificates of compliance we can go through as well. All right. All right, we have 63 New Boston Road. Uh, this is SEC 17-29. These were local orders of conditions. Uh, this was a single family house development. Um, we did have uh, a slight revision to the plan that came in um, as there was, if you remember correctly, there was some road drainage concerns uh, washing out the site. Uh, the developer at the time came back with a proposal to address that. Uh, the applicant, well, the new property owner um, did come back with a, another revision to that that actually removed that discharge away from the resource area to um, outside of the buffer zone um, in an upland area, which was, a, which was a good change to the project. So that was implemented. I did go out and do a site inspection of the site. Everything is stabilized. Um, I have no concerns with the project. So I would recommend issuance of a certificate of compliance. And with that, I would just reference that newest um, plan date for that, that drainage modification. Okay. Any discussion from the committee? No. Right. Becky, you want to see if there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this? Sixty-three New Boston Road. Is there anyone on the line that would like to address sixty-three New Boston Road? There's no one on the line. All in favor? Mr. Halderman. Steve Halterman, I'm in favor. David Barnacle. David Barnacle in favor. Stephen Chidester. Stephen Chidester in favor. Eric Gaspar. Eric Gaspar in favor. And Ed Goodwin in favor. Okay, we have um, 202 Lake Road, DEP file number 300-1006. Uh, this was a raisin rebuild on Big Alum. Um, went out and did a site visit last week. All the work is complete. The site is fully stabilized. Uh, this project did have a condition to monitor for two growing seasons because there was replacement upland replacement plantings. So besides that, um, everything is fine on the site, but typically what you've done in the past is you've waited to close those permits out to allow for that monitoring. Um, you could do that. You could wait completely if you wanted to, or you could, if you, if you chose, you could issue a partial with leaving um, it not fully closed to allow for the, the plant monitoring. What's your recommendation, Becky? 
I think you could issue a, a partial and just allow for the plant monitoring to continue and then we close that out afterwards. And what would the benefit of a partial be? Well, it allows them to show that the, I mean, the site work is done and the house is built and everything is done. Sometimes the property owners prefer to have that or if there's a new property owner, they prefer to have that. It allows for real estate tra transactions, which could be useful for people buying the properties. Like I said, it's, I mean, it's, it, it, it's up to you. I don't think that there's a real estate transaction here. So it, it, I think if you want to wait one more year to allow for that growing season, I think that's fine. Gentlemen? Comments? Steve Alderman, quick question. Oh, go ahead, Dave. I don't think we have any choice here. Un unless we need to be able to do something so that a real estate transaction can take place, we ask for a two-year growing cycle, and we should not be giving a certificate of compliance until the second year has been met, in my opinion. Steven? I mean, Steve? Yeah. Scott, uh, it's still going to remain on the, uh, still going to be a lien on the property, right? Even if we give a partial, so I don't, I don't see how that's going to be a pro. Uh, I don't, I don't see how it's going to benefit anything. I, I agree with David. You might as well just leave it on there. Eric. I mean, unless the property owner specifically asking us to close it out for a specific reason, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with leaving it open. Stephen Chidesta. Yeah, I, I agree. I, um, I think it doesn't make sense to issue a partial. In my opinion, we just wait till the period is done, and then we issue the, the complete certificate of compliance. Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Barnacle that we should, you know, without some specific reason, we should stick to what we what we had planned for this property. So, so we've got unanimous consent okay. with that. So. All right, Beck? Yep. Uh, next is, we have DEP file number 300-953. This is 272 Big Alum Road. And just as a refresher for you, um, this is a project that uh, received orders of conditions and then in 2017 received um, an amendment to the orders of conditions to revise uh, some shoreline work, including a dock, um, a dock system there. Uh, last year, we did issue an enforcement order for this site, um, and they did come back and revise, revise the project um, and did modify that dock system um, included uh, some restoration plantings and also uh, rain gardens etc so we did um, close out the enforcement order after we issued the amended permit all of that work was done last year uh, I did go out and do a site visit um, I didn't have any concerns with it all the plantings uh, looked great the rain gardens are functioning as designed uh, I did note a small amount of erosion near the shoreline. I did talk to the property owner about it. And it's actually where they kind of pull um, pull up their, their kayak. So he said they can um, modify how they, they do that so they don't cause any impacts there. So I don't have any concerns with that. Um, it did have one growing season. I don't know that for this one. And actually, I apologize because I don't have the permit in front of me that we required two growing seasons. But I can look that up real quick. Okay. So we can come back to this one if you want, because we're at 645 now. Uh, well, we're right in the middle of it. Let's finish it. All right. Did we, did we request two growing seasons? Because I'm looking right now. I'm trying to pull it up. Yeah. I hope so. That was a hard one to deal with. You guys remember? Mm -hmm. Giant concrete block. Yep. Any luck? Back? Oh yeah, yep, yep. Two growing seasons, twice a year for two growing seasons. So we'll have to wait on that one as well. 
Sorry, I didn't look that up earlier. All right. Okay, so now we are going to our 645 9 Holland Road, abbreviated notice of resource area delineation and request to amend DEP file number 300 0959. R. D. Bonaventura, the owner, applicant. Glenn Krawowski, EBT Environmental Consulting, Inc., representative. Approval of the wetland resource area and, and amend orders of conditions for DEP file number 300 0959 to remove special condition 38 and amend special condition 77 to remove the number 38. So, okay. so I'm just going to add, we do have um, receipt of the legal ad and the abutter notifications to public hearing. Just going to re recommend that we um, look at this as, as two things, one being the ANRAD and one being the request. And I think we should tackle the um, amendment request first. So I'm just going to provide comment, then we can allow um, Mr. Kravosky to to go in so this is the amendment request is something that came up before initially this came up in may from um mr cody um said he had some work to finish on the property at that time um you advised that that you'd like to or there was an extension request at that time um you'd like to see the work be completed under the enforcement order and didn't see the need for any type of extension for the permit um, and then mr kravosky came to another meeting and it was discussed um, so at, at this time, I don't think that you're in a position to issue an amendment request for this. So under the, I mean, the permit is expired now and under the extension, the emergency order, I mean, there are extensions granted for permits. However, reading through it, any permit in violation, that extension doesn't apply. But with that said, um, you know, and this is something that we talked about before too, with the, the language in the condition that's of a concern of Mr. Kravosky, um, it does say that, you know, in, you know it, it says that they've maximized riverfront area. However, it does say unless things are exempt under 310 CMR 10.58, and that's the riverfront, and that's where the historic mill um, clause comes up. So I don't see it, in, in my opinion, as an issue that that order um, has that language in it because it does say unless exempt and through the ANRAD process um, I mean there is that possibility that they are they can show that they do meet the historic mill complex exemption for the property or a portion of it so I don't see that it's one probably necessary and two because technically I don't believe that the permit is extended because it was in violation and there's an active enforcement order on it that they that they qualify for the um, extension provisions under the emergency order. And that's all. All right. Glenn, do you want? I uh, I don't agree that it's uh, that is a portion of it, but as he was mentioning, uh, can you hear me clearly? Because we know we have a problem with me here. Hear me? Hear me fine? Yeah, you when your head moves away, it... it okay, if uh, I'm just staying straight at it like this. If you say. stay straight at it, you, you're, you're good, okay. I think. I Anybody else? Thank yeah. You. All right, so, so if... So far, uh, so good. Becky, if, uh, as she explained, uh, to get the exemption on the historical mill complex, I know that they'll be confused and confused on in the future when people read that order, you're going to see no more alteration as long as we um, all I suppose agree that it's exempt the order itself was portions of that order were in violation but I don't think think the lack of historical mill complex or historical mill complex riverfront was part of the enforcement order but so uh, we'll discuss that we'll have an email go out of the email I know there's going to be a request to continue simply because I don't believe the commission has had had an opportunity to review the wetland line and the mean annual high water line at the toe of the slope along the impoundment river. 
Well, um, Glenn, I think we should just, one. yeah, we need to look at these, um, the amendment request and I think the ANRAD separately. And I think the, we put it on the agenda this way because you wanted the one legal ad. So, it, I mean, it probably should have been two separate hearings, but the way we had scheduled it was this way. So that's why I think we should just address your amendment request as one and then um, address the ANRAD separately because that's going to get its own file number, et cetera. I appreciate that. Uh, we did it on one because it can be done as one and because your legal ads are excessively expensive. Nobody else is. Oh, yeah, and that's fine. Dollars. That's fine. I just mean the public hearing, we should have we should have scheduled you as two. The, the legal ad's fine as one. I, I don't have a problem with that. So that's why I, I just want to keep them separate. I think we keep it separate, the amendment request and the ANRAD. Um, on, and, okay. okay. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. We'll, um, we'll ask for continuance on the extension request then for probably the same amount of time that we're going to ask for an extension on the ANRAD itself to give us time to uh, look at what you're saying specifically. I'm not following you. You have an amendment request, not an extension request. But the permit's expired either way. I need the extension from the hearing, a continuation of the hearing on, the, on this discussion. I'll be asking for a continuation on this discussion, please, so that we can uh, research what you're saying for your next meeting, as we will not be closing, I would imagine, this ANRAD tonight, because I don't believe you've had time to look at the wetlands resource area line. So we can take up this discussion if the commission still chooses to allow us to at the next meeting. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine, Glenn. Uh, what I'm going to do for the next meeting is we will schedule two separate public hearings. The ANRAD will have its own public hearing, and the amendment request will have a public hearing. Because the amendment request is for file number 300 dash. What is it? 959. Yep, and the ANRAD is going to have a new file number. So I just want to keep them separate moving forward because I think it'll be cleaner, especially when voting, et cetera. Do you understand? No, no, because how, do, how does the legal ad then that we already have out that binds them both together? Because you're continuing the to the next, down? yeah, but, but you're continuing to the next meeting, so I think it's okay. 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 Fine, thank you. Any discussion from the board? Mr. Barnacle? I, I agree with the continuation. Give it Barnacle. Mr. Haldeman? Yeah, I agree with the continuation. Mr. Gaspar, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with the continuation. How's the cleanup going on the site, though? I'm curious about that. I don't. Can we ask any? Uh, can we comment on that, the chairman? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Cleanup is as far. Well, when we have a site inspection to look at the resource area line, we can see that there's no more erosion. The wood chips didn't blow away. That we with the question about. We don't have any more runoff coming off of Route 20 through the yard. Uh, the ditches have been filled. The water coming off of Nine Hall, so there's 20 and then there's Nine Holland. We've captured that into the catch basin. We've cleaned up the sediments that are down in the catch basin uh, to the west side of the building. I stopped here on Sunday to look at the, uh, as Mr. Uh, Chides, or is, not just him, but other members too, there was questions on. Uh, Goodwin on the uh, planting of saplings. We did uh, have a good opportunity to take photos of the saplings on the Connell's, Mr. McConnell's property. I'm very interested in showing you that they're 95% Norway maple. They're about two feet high. I've taken photos so we can, uh, and it's a good canopy, but if the majority of the species I'd like to just present that during a site inspection to you, and then we can uh, take up that, I believe, last okay. last point. We have contacted rare species program, explained um, everything we've done for sediment into that uh, mussel habitat. We don't see any more sediments going into the mussel habitat. I'm going to show you that. Then the only outstanding maybe issue is what's happening. All right, Stephen. Yeah, so... We, do, we haven't approved a remediation plan or restoration plan that I'm aware of, have we? No. No. 
And I mean, I'm I'm glad to hear that there's some saplings that went in, but I, I guess I want to see the plan for restoring some of the vegetation along the the river. Uh, the chairman. Yeah, go ahead. We didn't say we planted any saplings. We said that the saplings that were cut down on the McConnell property turned out to be Norway maple, exotic invasive. They're sprouting now. We have a good chance to look at them. And that's what I'd like to show you. As far as approving a plan, plan right, you have an approved plan. We presented the plan, said what we were going to do, did everything we were going to do, uh, that we believe solved the sediment problems stabilization problem. The last thing um, is the sapling issue. So we walk over the site. I'm not saying it's the last thing because you might have more. I believe it's the last thing, but if there's more, then we'll take them up during the site inspection. And uh, maybe we'll be able to uh, finalize on the sapling issue with you. Numbers or understanding that there were exotic invasives and they read the book. Those are the things that we remove. And of course, there can always be more saplings planted along the proper slope on the uh, adjacent to the, uh, what that would be, I believe, to the east, south, south, to the east of the building. Okay. As Glenn knows, the state does not approve of any growth of Norway maple. It is an invasion. I'm, I'm sorry, as Glenn is saying, as Mr. Bonacle, Sorry, sir. I was agreeing with you that the state is indicating clearly that Norway maple should not be planted. Oh, they're, they're a little fact, To the point where they had six inch DBH in Boston Center taken down because they were Norway maple. Uh, and one last thing about Norway maple, if I state it, they're allelotropic, if you're aware of that term. When they seed out, they give off a chemical that suppresses the plant growth around them. That's why they become dominant. In Worcester, where I have projects, it's the only species. But yes, they are uh, not just that they grow and drop a seed, they prevent other birds because of the chemical they give off. But I'd like to show you all because it was very interesting to stop and look at the extensive growth of this way maple uh, from the root, from the cutoff stumps. So what we're looking for here um, is a continuation, and yes. you're talking about filing under the AMRAD. Right, but you had asked, gentlemen, um, Eric. Oh, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, uh, I wasn't contradicting you. I was clarifying where we're going. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this is Stephen Chittister. I'm fine with the continuation. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, Eric Asper, as am I. Yep. Yep. So that that makes it unanimous. So yeah, and Glenn, you're okay with it. Thank you, sir. Well, might yep. we ask that the commission discuss the uh, the site inspection if that's what you are going to do? Um, I would think that the commission would probably want to do a site inspection at our next site visit. Thank you, sir. Rather than uh, have a vague conversation here right now. So, Ed, can I make a... Does anybody disagree with that? I, can I make a recommendation? Yeah, this is Steve Halderman. Can, yeah, go ahead, Steve. Okay, uh, Glenn, you're talking about the sapling issue. No. Oh, are we completely sure. talking... Of, are we talking about the Norway maples, or is there another sapling issue that we're planting saplings, or what? Uh, could you just clarify that for me? Thank you, sir. There is... Um, there's a sapling issue of the cut-down saplings and that were Norway maple 90 percent. Right. Yeah. That's and then there's the sapling issue of planting saplings that is still uh, request slash requirement okay. of the board. Okay. Now. Okay. What I'm getting. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Because you just kept saying. I think you were mixing and matching. I do. We, we do not need, in my opinion, to go look at some Norway maples. They should just be clipped off, period. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm missing here. I don't want to go and look at Norway maple saplings. I want them, or uh, sprouts. Uh, I, I want them cut off. Uh, not on his property. So maybe I'm. Well, well, 
if I could through the chairman. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Just cutting them off will not solve it because they'll just grow back up. So mm -hmm. there's other points of mitigation that we can propose during the site inspection. Maybe the commission wants 10 saplings or 20 saplings of native, native species planted. There's again this other <laughs> issue of sap, saplings that are going to grow back that are exotic and basic. That might, and we did mention this before the site inspection, we could go in there with Mr. McConnell's permission and we show one thing that there's a good canopy, and secondly, that we can pop out these four or five inch diameter root systems with the saplings as a point of mitigation to remove the away maple. Maybe the commission okay. would, instead of planting 10 or 15 saplings of uh, native, maybe we can plant five or seven with the removal of these exotics, and that becomes a um, mitigation for four saplings. But that would be a discussion that I would like to have at the site on, on the, how we would plant, whether it be pines or whatever was at the top of the slope adjacent to the building back to give you back that that you're asking for. But, but maybe not the full amount that you might ask because we're going to go back in and take McConnell's low-way maple stuff. All of them. And there's a lot of them. Okay. Right. Probably well, I guess we would, I guess, I guess we would want a uh, recommendation from you guys how to do that. That, if I can interrupt, sorry, that, that would be my recommendation. At this point, I think it would be useful for the project team to go through the enforcement order and go through the orders or conditions um, and detail how they've met them. Um, and in, if that includes any, what, that was one of the outstanding things was, uh, that was discussed was if and what type of restoration would be required for um, the illegal cutting that was done out there. So I think that would be useful, and I think it'd be useful going through that orders or conditions just for looking at, um, you know, you have your, your request and to amend that. Um, there are other conditions in there, and I think that, I mean, that is an older permit that should be closed out soon anyways. Um, I think it would be useful moving forward to have that information um, in hand. And then as far as the, the ANRAD goes, um, you know, that being kind of a, a separate but related thing here, we don't have a DEP file number for that, so we will continue that. Um, however, I mean, I just wanted to add that with that site, with um, the delineation there and the question with the historic mill complex, um, you know, whether the commission wants to do it now or wait, but, you know, for the size of the site and the, the you know, everything that needs to be looked at there, I'm going to recommend that we just do a third party um, wetland review for that one to help assist with um, understanding for, for historic mill complex and just to, to review all the flagging out there. So I don't know if you want to, you know, discuss that now so that way we can get that process started for them instead of waiting to the next public hearing. Um, that's up to you. Thank you for uh, requesting a peer review. We appreciate that very much. Okay. Sir. Any comments on it? Eric? No, I'm good. Steve Paulman? Yeah, I think the third party review is a good idea. David Barnacle? David Barnacle agrees to take these comments. And Stephen Chidester. I also agree with Becky's comments. Yeah, I do too. So Becky, you're saying we we, we hold off on a site visit until we get the um, peer review? What? I think we can get the peer review process started, but I think the, the site visit to review with the enforcement order aspect of it, I mean, we can do that sooner than later, but I think it'd be useful to have something from the project team going over the enforcement order, how they're meeting it, and that open permit with how they've addressed everything, because that's what the, the enforcement order requested pretty much was, you know, that the original order was a result of a violation that they addressed. So I think if we had something from them detailing how they met it or what their recommendations are for some type of restoration, it'd probably be useful to have that to go out to look at. I mean, there's nothing saying you can't go Who's out the and- project team? Who do, you, who do you think is a project team? Well, I mean, there's a property owner, there's an engineer, there's Glenn working on it. I, well, I just use that term- Glenn is, Glenn is pretty much the project team, right? The owner's in Florida, right? Yeah, and, and Burton Engineering is not part of the project team. Okay. Uh, well, then, Glenn. Through the plan, oh, I, I mean, they did create the plan through a lot of uh, consternation. All right. Well, 
I want to try and move along here. So we have continuation. A potential site inspection. Yeah. And the project team putting together itemizing enforcement order and the order of conditions, what what has been done, what what is completed. I, I hear what Becky is saying. I understand. Okay. Uh, itemizing All right. be helpful. What has been done. All right. We'll see if there's any public so comment. So we've got agreement on a continuation from everyone, including you, Glenn, right? We request that, and All we right. would ask that the commission, at your convenience, discuss or like call Becky if you discuss this later. This uh, potential site inspection, possibly prior to the next meeting, so we can maybe close right. out that one last okay. point. But we will have documentation for you on the itemized items that have been taken care of. Excuse me. What are we? Doing? All right. Thank you. We're just going to see if there's much. anyone from the public that wants to comment before you move on. Good. Hello, is there anyone from the public on the line that would like to comment for Nine Holland Road? Nine Holland Road, any public comments? No comments. Okay. You're all set, Beck? Yep, we're all set. All right. All right, we are now at 7 o'clock, 148 Lake Road, Notice of Intent, DEP file number 300, TBA, um, Big Allen Lake Association applicant, S. Pick, Pickle, uh, Burton Engineering representative, code grade drainage improvements along Lake Road. So we did receive right. a file number which came in last night, just so you're aware. So this is file number 300-1067. And we do have comment from DEP, which I can go over when you're ready as well. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, so this is what DEP commented. It says, although the project location is stated to be 148 Lake Road, it appears that the proposed work within the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act will be occurring at 136, 138, and possibly 140 Lake Road. Sections A, assessor's reference, book and page references, property owners, and F, signatures of the NOI should be updated to reflect the location of the proposed work. The applicant should confirm that abutters have been notified for the appropriate lots. All wetland resource areas associated buffer zones and proposed erosion controls must be included on the site plan. A stormwater report containing a minimum, at a minimum, a stamped and signed stormwater checklist and a narrative describing the project's compliance with the Massachusetts stormwater standards, particularly standard one, two, eight, and nine, must be submitted to DEP and the Conservation Commission prior to the closing of the hearing for this project. In order to meet standard nine and the O and M plan must be submitted that describes how the proposed stormwater system will be maintained and designates who will maintain this. Um, so we did anticipate some of these comments and I'll let the, um, the representative kind of go into that. I did receive um, a couple things from the project proponent recently. We discussed operation and maintenance um, and I do have a letter from the Big Alum Lake Association um, saying that they will um, be responsible for that, that maintenance. And then I also did receive today a letter um, from the property owners on Lake Road that they're aware of the notice of intent and in the work on their, their properties. Um, it would just appear that as DEP noted that we probably, um, well, we do need to have the butter notifications uh, for all of those properties looked at to make sure that everybody was, was properly notified. Since, the, since it was just filed for 148. The, um, is all they have to be is aware, even though it's going over their property, Becky? Uh, they did, well, no, they did sign it. I don't have, sorry, I don't have the letter right in front of me. They did, I can pull it up. They did, they did sign it, um, and like I said, I can pull it up if you want to look at it right now, um, that they're aware of the notice of intent and they approve of the work. So I think for the property owner aspect signature, that would probably be, be sufficient. But we still need to make sure that all the proper butters were notified. So. Okay. All right. Now uh, the applicant. Hello, this is Kalisto Burton. Hi, Kalisto. How you doing? 
I'm doing fine. How's everybody? <clears throat> good, good. I don't know if you've reviewed the plan, and our, would you like me to go over it briefly? Yes, I think that we would like you to yeah, go over it. Yeah, I'm just going to pull it up real quick okay. for you. Excellent. While she's doing that, I can briefly explain it. So from uh, Lake Road from Old Town Road, which is in the lower left corner of the plan, um, the, road, the road drops for about 500 feet. And um, anyway, so, so what we have is the, the, the road drops for about 500 feet. It slopes into the bank away from the pond, and erosion has occurred over time. It's not a paved road. So the first thing we impose to do is, if you could see at the lower left corner, um, install a swale about 100 feet long that goes to a catch basin. Um, there are existing swales sort of along, along the road further down. Uh, we, we go to another 100 so feet of pipe, and then there's another catch basin. And from that catch basin, we go across the street to a manhole. Further down the road is a third catch basin. So there is no drainage structures on this road now. Well, there is further away, but not in this area. Um, install three drainage structures, all catch basins, and a drainage swale um, to capture drainage so we can help control some of the, the sediment. Um, as it crosses the road, where I mentioned it crosses the road, we're going to put a manhole in to collect the water from the three catch basins. And then it'll discharge after a short distance in a pipe into another grass swale that we're going to be installing. This is in the vicinity of the existing boat ramp. And that grass swale will have some check dams so we can capture sediment so it doesn't go into the lake. Um, and that, that's how we're going to capture that first couple hundred feet of sediment control. Um, further down the road, as we head to the right, uh, there is an existing catch basin on the lake side of the road. I think it's in front of house. I think it's 138. Um, that catch basin has been filled with sediment, and uh, there'll be a, uh, so that'll have to be cleaned out. And there's a little grading of the road that will take place to kind of direct the water to that catch basin. From that catch basin, there's already a pipe that discharges as you move from that catch basin to the upper right um, to a low-lying area, which is sort of silted up. Um, there was lawn there. It's, it's kind of eroded. And that, I'm going to call it, for lack of a better word, a small detention pond. From there, it discharges to a, um, you know, a channel that then it discharges into the lake. So what we plan to do is that low-lying detention basin area is to restore it, um, make it uh, a little bit more of a detention basin, put a check dam at the end so that we can capture sediment uh, before it goes into the lake. And then this way, um, it can all be uh, maintained. The, if, if you recall at the last meeting, there was a prior plan um, that had a few more structures, some more, uh, I guess it was really more manholes, and um, the, the, the Lake community has a budget, and we exceeded that budget, so we've tempered the plan down to what we have here. It's not quite in conformance with the uh, mass stormwater regs, but right now, it's better, it's better than what's at the site now. And the only difference is that we're going discharging from one catch basin into another rather than from a catch basin into a manhole. That's the only difference. But with regular maintenance, you can overcome that, that issue. Okay. Becky, you have any comments on this as far as? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this is an existing private road. We know it has a significant erosion problem, which ends up in the lake. I think this will be a big improvement over what's going on out there right now. I think um, they just have some procedural things that we'll need, they'll need to do um, for which DEP requested, which we can get taken care of, and then just do some quick analysis also for the stormwater that they requested. Um, and I think that, you know, 
they should be able to show that there's a um, an improvement here and that they meet the redevelopment standards. But I think we just got to make sure we cover all that procedural um, stuff that DEP did mention. So, and how do how do we proceed to get that done? Well, I think we give them. Um, they request a continuation. Um, we'll just work with Burton. Um, we'll just need to revise like the NOI sheet for the other properties, uh, the book and page numbers, uh, get the abutter notifications, get the list for the different properties. Um, a lot of them have probably already been notified, so it might just be a few more people. We get that taken care of, and we can help them with that. Um, engineer runs, um, you know, figures out how they're meeting those different standards, and we, we get all that information um, to us, and they get that to DEP, and then we can move forward. All right. Comments from the board? Mr. Barnacle? Uh, Callisto, are those um, systems that you're putting in, are they deep sunk? Yes. And uh, the, the, the next page is a. I'm sorry. The water table is at what level? Going down there? Oh, level? no, no, no. We're, we're way up. We're way above the lake. We're up on the road. And we're, oh, 30, 40, 50 feet above the lake, depending on where we are. So we're not, we're not, that, that's not an issue <laughs> with those sumps. Okay. Well, that's why I was concerned about whether it was a deep sump or not. Yeah, well, we'd have to be uh, like 20 feet deep for the closest okay. sump to get into the groundwater. Okay, thanks. That's it, Mr. Stephen? Chairman. Stephen? No, no problem. Um, yeah, I'm fine with it. I just, my only uh, concern, I guess, would be you know, just making sure we have a good O&M plan moving forward. Okay. Eric? No, I, I, I agree. You know, if uh, part of this failure is because uh, they needed to clean out the existing catch basins because they weren't being maintained, I think we just would need to make sure that that is insured in the whatever order of conditions is in there. And Steve, I think I. Yeah, I I have a quick comment. I'm I'm curious of uh, Calistro, uh, what you meant when you said it doesn't meet the uh, Massachusetts stormwater regulations. No, the, the, what what Can happens is normally, if I can, it just it's not that it doesn't meet the regulations. Normally, we don't discharge a catch basin into another catch basin. We discharge a catch basin into a manhole. So you're, you know, this way, the, if you discharge one catch basin into another, you're adding more water to that catch basin than you, than you otherwise would need to. But to add the extra drainage structures, each one is like three grand, four grand, you know, um, it, it starts to add up to the cost. And this is a, a, a homeowners association. This is not a business. They're trying to maintain it. So that, that, that was it. I, we just eliminated some catch basins. I mean, some uh, manholes to uh, bring this in, in budget. Uh, I think it, can I go through every, everybody? I have no comment. I do want to ask for the public. Yes, I have some feedback. This is Tom Clark. I'm really been responsible for four years with the uh, yep. Big Allen Lake Association. And as Caliso has mentioned, the, um, you know, going from uh, storm drain to storm drain, I just want to give you the assurance that it's very short distance in between these storm drains, okay? We're not at the 300 foot level. These are you know, less than 100 feet, 75 feet of distance between them. The whole run here of underground storm drains is only 200 feet. So um, I feel that this is a very, very adequate plan um, for this hill, and it's going to be a huge, huge improvement over what's been going on for the past 30 years. Um, and it's really going to help support the, um, the environmental conditions and the sediment into the lake. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, that said, anyone else before we go with a continuation? Is there anyone on the phone from the public? Seeing no one. To comment on Lake Road, 148 Lake Road. Drainage improvements. Uh, no public comments. 
Uh, all right, I'm going to go around. Continuation, Mr. Barnacle. Hey, David Barnacle, agree. Uh, Mr. Halterman. Steve Halterman, I agree. Mr. Gaspar. Mr. Gaspar, I agree. And Stephen Chidester. Stephen Chidester, I approve the continuation. And Ed Goodwin, I approve the continuation. And um, please, though, you have requested the continuation, so we're all set. Yes. And can you give me the date? Yep, that is going Becky to be September 1st at 7 o'clock. And then just so everyone's aware, the okay. Nine Holland Road and RAD is continued to 6.30 on September 1st, and the Nine Holland Road amendment request is continued to 6.45. Okay. All right, we are now up to 7.21, so we are at 7.15, 6 Picker Road. Notice of intent, DEP file number 300-1062, continuation from August 1st, uh, New England Coal Storage, LLC, applicant, Glenn Kravosky, EBT Environmental Consultants Representative for the construction of a wetland crossing and commercial infrastru site infra infrastructure. Glenn, you there? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Yep. I would, uh, I believe, Mr. Brady Canis or Chris Bailey, if he's there, uh, Alan, I see is here, I'd have more to I, offer. I, excuse me, Glenn. You're, you're doing the uh, that head shaking Bob thing? again. Yeah, center yourself on your mic and uh, hold that Brady. head. Take one hand and hold it on the top of your head. I'm, I'm kidding. Brady Canis and Art Allen are there, and uh, Andrew Baum might have more to say because it's, I think it's playing to related to uh, stormwater is one of the other items left behind. I'll uh, leave it up to the team to uh, move forward with Mr. Baum or Mr. Pannis. Hey, you guys. Um, we got Brady Pannis here with Arco. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes, I can. Can anybody have a problem? Go ahead. No, I hear you. Okay. Uh, so... The commission, or Becky, correct me if any of this is inaccurate, but I believe last time we left off, we were at the point of we just need to get confirmation from storm peer review uh, and one more comment from wetland peer review uh, to confirm that the site meeting the code requirements and uh, the design necessary to proceed with approval. Um, We've gotten all of the comments back. Wetland peer review. I do not believe there's, there's no further action needed on our part. And I think the last comment we received was really addressed last meeting when we approved the eight picker uh, NOI. Um, Becky and, and Art, is that correct? Yep, that's this is Art Allen. Yeah. It's, uh, Yep, they, they were they were good on my comments. It was just uh, you know essentially just a value judgment um, from the commission on the on the uh, the hardship for the crossing and then the the necessity of the uh, eight picker road temporary access, which I believe that from what I've been told, the commission is, uh, is good with those items. So all the other revisions that I. Uh, requests that have been made as of uh, the last uh, plan revision. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then in, in terms of storm peer review comments, we received um, some additional comments um, for 19 items that were on the original uh, list. We met with Becky and Plan Board and Dave with CMG earlier today, and I think four or five of those um, we determined have been complete from other updates to the plans and comments we had received previously. Uh, another two of those are order of conditions recommendations that don't have any response um, required and could be updated and added with the permit. We do have a couple 
promise that we need to make a few tweaks in the calculations, nothing that's going to change the design at this point. Um, and we are planning to make those up those updates as fast as we can. Um, Dave, I did have a question for you. I know on comment 28 where there's there's a question regarding the base and bottom and whether the seasonal high groundwater may be getting close to that bottom. Um, we sent you kind of a, a clouded area. Are, are we correct from our conversation earlier that if we revise the roof recharge area to be at a 736 or a 738 within that clouded area that we would not need to get additional test pit data and we would be within the the assumptions that are being made with the comments at this point? Uh, basically, this is David Feist with CMG. Um, you know, I took a quick look at that. <clears throat> it's really a question for your design engineer. Some as long as they can provide supporting information with the design that shows that they meet the standard, that's what's required. Um, the additional testing, you know, would really, you know, be your call. The current design, I think we talked about today, I would recommend the additional two test pits in that area. Um, but again, if you're going to reconfigure Basin A and that other one with using your existing data, as long as you can show that it meets the standard, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Sorry, just, just making a note for myself there. Um, that That's the biggest comment. The rest of them, we are kind of shifting or just changing the drainage calculations or adding a note on to the drainage plan uh, here or there. Um, in terms of having this all set up so that we're ready to go for the next meeting, uh, and Chris, feel free to jump in here too to make sure I'm wording this all correctly, but I think we would like to be at a point where everyone's comfortable with the continuation, but that we can start writing the uh, order of conditions and having the permit ready for 9-1 um, as well. I'd like to have a discussion about that to see if that would be possible. Yeah, that's fine. And just so the, the commission yeah, knows, I haven't had a chance to, to, to speak to them since we had the conversation today. What, what Brady's going over is that we did have a conference call to go over um, Dave's comments, so we were all kind of on the same page moving forward. And as Brady indicated, there are a number of things that appear to have been addressed with the last project revisions. Uh, there's a lot of things that were discussed to be changed on the plan. And one of the significant things was this number 28 where he's um, discussing. So one of the things we discussed today was, right, are there possible revisions you can do that can show that, you know, we have, we're meeting the standard with, you know, being the distance off of the water table that we need to be, or do we need to go back out and do some more boring tasks to, to figure that out? And it was kind of left that, all right, well, maybe they can do the boring tasks and, and show that, and then we can move, move forward with their current design because those boring tests would support that. So Brady, are you, are you thinking now that you might just do like a project revision so you don't have to do the boring testings? Well, so as, as we discussed earlier this afternoon, Becky, we, our concern is just the timing. Um, we are rapidly running out of time to be able to start work on the wetland or have enough time to properly stabilize the temporary access side of the site before the winter. Um, and with just receiving these comments this morning, we, we don't know if we are going to be able to get those borings completed before the next hearing, which then means we're losing another two weeks, potentially more with um, the permit writing process. And it, our time is just getting squeezed here. So I think in, in less, unless the commission is open to the idea of those boring being performed as an order of condition for construction, it's gonna move the fastest if we push the just the recharge basin and we're not fully redesigning any basins or anything, just the, the recharge water area um, to a spot where we know we can 
be above the two feet of modeled existing seasonal high groundwater. Yeah, no, it's just that that was new from after we talked today. So, I mean, I think if you can do that and Dave says that it meets the standards, I, I think that that's um, a project revision that would be beneficial and right. It probably would save you the time to not have to do the boring. So if by doing that, um, it meets the, the standards and there's no concerns from, from Dave, from my per perspective, I wouldn't see any issues with that. I mean, I don't know, does that mean any changes with the current limit of work at all or any expansion or are we looking at the same footprint? No, so that, this would just mean changes to that basin grading. Um, there would not be any changes to the roadway or building or crossing or any of the other items within the buffer zones. It would just be reworking the recharge basin that is um, page east of basin A on our plans and the south, the page southwest corner of basin A would need to get tweaked a little bit just to make the, the grades be at a maintainable slope. Okay, I mean, I just don't have the plan set in front of me, so I, I, I don't know, does that mean that it goes closer to the wetland or? Oh, so the recharge basin would move slightly closer to the wetland. Yes, a portion of that would move within the 100 foot buffer instead of being entirely within the 200 foot buffer. Okay, but well, yeah, we're not talking about 10 feet or 25 feet next to the wetland, so. No, correct. Uh, yeah, from, from my perspective, if that can meet um, the standards and you can make that revision, I think that and it's not going to have any significant impact on the, the project site or resource area impact, I wouldn't see a concern with that. We asked Dave what his opinion is. Thank you, David. Yep, um, I agree with Rebecca. Based on what we talked about today, is provided they can show that they meet the standard um, with the existing data they have, um, you know, that's what's required. And I'd, I'd be okay with that as well. All right, Becky, how do you want to handle it from the point of view of um, from the commission's point of view? Well, I think what you we want to have. Continuation and have them bring that back. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's a number well, of project revisions, and I think that that would be one of the additional project revisions that they can do, and they can submit that revised plan. Uh, I'm happy to work on the the permit for the next meeting. Uh, if we can get that information in, and we can get it reviewed, then I think they'd be in a position, um, provided that they've met all the standards, and, and Dave can concur with that, that you could. Uh, the project as stormwater was the last item here All right. at the next meeting. Commission comments from the commissioners? Eric, Eric, what do you think? Just so they're clear, Becky, when would you need their revisions in your hands in order to make that possible? Um, the meeting is September 1st. I would probably need it by the Thursday, um, and it, well, obviously allow Dave time to review it. Um, I would need everything probably done by the Thursday before the meeting. Okay. What uh, is that? Just Dave? wanted Brady Brady to know that. <laughs> hey, all right. What date? What date is that? <laughs> the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. And. Um, this is Brady with Arco. Becky, to, to clarify, is that the revisions on the 27th or CMG's comments as well on the 27th? Uh, it would be good to have both. I'm not sure Dave's schedule. Um, if he can, if he re reviews it after that and says it's fine, I mean, I can move forward working to have that draft ready for the board either way. I just want to make sure he has enough time to look at it, to too. The, I'm going to go to the public. Public, if, if nobody has any additional comments. Stephen, do you have any additional comments? Uh, no, I, everything's been addressed that I was curious about. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. B, you, you're all set. Steve Eric Hallman. had a question. I just, I, uh, yeah, I, I, this is Eric. I just had a question to David. Uh, is that, is that going to work within your schedule? Um, yes, as they've addressed the majority of comments, provided they can address these last few, I should be able to review it that same day. It would be better if you could get it to me earlier um, to give me just in case there's something we have to discuss. But I'll do my best to make sure I have the comments uh, for Thursday, or worst case, Friday, the, fall, the Friday, the day after. Okay. Jeff, Thank do you, you have a, a hand up? Yes. I, I can't hear you. Yes, I had my hand up. I just, I would ask that both the David and the design engineer for Brady be available that day so they can talk immediately and get any outstanding issues resolved on the 27th or 28th. Just make it happen. You know, make sure everybody's available for have a conversation. Uh, could you check to see if there's anybody in the public that would like to speak on this, Jeff? Yes, Holly will do that. Holly? Is okay, any, sorry. Yep. Is there any public comment for Six Picker Road? Notice of intent, any public comment for Six Picker Road? No comments. All right, um, all in favor of a continuation. Mr. Barnacle? David Barnacle in favor. Mr. Halderman? Steve Halterman in favor. Stephen Chidester? Stephen Chidester in favor. Eric Gaspar. Eric Gaspar in favor. And Brady Paris. Brady uh, in favor. He can't no. vote. Okay. No, but I'm just making sure he's in favor because if he does, if he wants us to close the meeting, we have to. So, all right, Becky, you all set with that? <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you. So that's continued to see you all. Seven fifteen on September 1st. Yeah. Thank you, Art. Dave. How are you doing, Thank Art? you very much. Art's good. Nice to see good. you all. Yeah, nice to see you. Stay safe. You too. Yeah, all right, we are now at 737. We're at uh, 27 Lad Road. Notice of intent, DEP file number 300-1056, continued from August 4th, 2020. R. Jennings, 508 International, is the applicant. A. Salu, owner. O'Neill is the representative. Replacement of decking on an existing telephone pole bridge. Do we have Mr. a representative? Chair, I'm recused for this public hearing okay. and the next one. All right. Becky, do we have anybody representing 27 Lad Road? I have, I'm not a, I'm not aware. Is there anyone on for 27 Lad Road? All right, Jackie. Andy Baum's on. I, well, not uh, there for Dawn, um, but I can speak quickly to what the commission has asked of from the last meeting regarding some specific details on the pole bridge crossing. Uh, we didn't have time to get plans into the commission for full review, but I did prepare a uh, pole bridge plan with some basic construction details showing um, in general some of the performance standards in terms of clearance, uh, decking spacing over the bridge area, the approach and reproach on both ends of the, of the deck. And then there was also a question of the routing of the trail itself <clears throat> to uh, the town line with respect to the town line. So I did prepare a draft plan has been given to Becky to take a look at and try to open the dialogue with the commission on, on what we're proposing in terms of um, adjusting that bridge uh, to be in compliance with your requirements. And I also did some look up a research with the forestry service for pedestrian bridge. So I, I Becky, when did you get that? Yeah, I received that today at about 3.30. And we don't have anything on the, um, the rest of the trails. Is that correct, Andrew? No, he did submit so, um, a draft plan for relocating on that property too. And I mean, I can pull them up if you want me to. 
I was I was holding off on that one, Mr. Chairman, just because of your previous comment on keeping your um, hearing pieces separate. Uh, well, yeah, that's we can we can deal with that too. I, I I just that's, that's up to you. I'm, I'm just both of them have been done or started. Becky, how do you want to handle it? The um, Um, well, that's, that's up to you. I mean, last time we discussed, you know, we didn't have any new information to date, um, and either you were in a position to issue a continuation if you were asked, um, or, you know, you would have had to at that point deny the project for, um, you know, well, you'd have to issue a determination, and at that point, um, based off the information that you had, my recommendation would be that you would have had to deny it because it was, um, incomplete and didn't appear to meet performance standards. Um, I haven't really had a chance to review this draft plan. I don't know that I would say that it's um, the application is complete at this point or if it met performance standards because I haven't had a chance to look at it. We need a continuation. I mean, you were pretty adamant. I'll make a motion, though. Go ahead. Make a motion that we. Um, Oh, we need to ask if there's any public input. Well, we can we can do that, um, but we can talk about it before we make a motion. Anybody? Any further? I, I am really not. I'd like to see what, what there is. I haven't. Um, it came in this can afternoon. Can you bring it up? What? It came bring in this afternoon. Right, I hear that. So, so it's incomplete. I believe Becky said what she got is incomplete. What even came in today is incomplete. I mean, I haven't had a chance to review I, the plan, um, but the, the, the fairly big outstanding question here is, does it meet performance standards? Um, I, I'm not in a position to say it does. Um, as it stood last time, um, no, it didn't. Um, I mean, there's no information to show, you know, it's a limited project, how, how it meets those standards, uh, no alternative analysis submitted to show that there's no alternative to going through a wetland. Um, so as far as not having alternative analysis, then yes, it can be incomplete, but I, I haven't reviewed the design, um, the draft design that's been submitted. The GM and if Glenn Kowalski could speak, I'm sorry. Are you I was representing? On meeting. I had a meeting at East Brookfield. I just had to close. I apologize. So I am going who's, to speak. Who's there's speaking? No there's no alternative analysis for footbridge. For well, that you go to Wachusett Mountain or anywhere else is footbridge. There is no alternative analysis, Rebecca, on that. We're, we're raising the deck up a couple feet off the ground. We're having spacing an inch and a half. We're reducing the width of the bridge from six to four. And uh, this was where the original cot path was. But if you had foot paths over wetlands or foot bridges, just take, for instance, Wachusett Mountain, you don't put it at the road where you're trying to cross through, uh, through woodlands. There is no alternative for the position of a footbridge or making it be at the narrowest point. Uh, we'll review that again, and we would appreciate that. This is not a roadway or a driveway, the footbridge over a wetland, and again, I would ask you to ask DEP, no alternative analysis for that location. There is a requirement that we replicate the wetlands for where the sauto tubes hold this thing up in the air so we have adequate clearance. We do want to reduce the width of it from, again, four, six to four. We thing up, it might take as many as eight sauto tubes. I hadn't had a time to re review Mr. Baum's plan today, the Fish and Wildlife all day on electroshocking. We will go over the plan tomorrow. And, um, and again, I asked Mr. Baum to uh, take a look at the full trail of the Charlton line to show that we, so unlike the road location, this does not come close to any other weapons but this one historic farm is caught that crossing. I'm not going to claim that this bridge was there before. All I'm saying is that they will design it as a footbridge 
for the um, resource area properly. So back to Mr. Barnacle's point, then, you're looking for a continuation. If the commission so, thank you, Mr. Barnacle. I'm sorry I missed that part. Yes, we would be. Thank you, sir. Eric? I can't hear you. So, Eric, you're not on the... Sorry. Sorry about sorry. that. Uh, so we're scrapping the plan or the footbridge entirely and the plan that was submitted today is a brand new structure. The footbridge that is there now, the railroad tie bridge, is going to be ripped out, and and the, a new structure is going to be built. Is that is that what I'm to understand? Through, through Mr. Goodwin and Mr. Bob. No, what we're doing is uh, we're tightening up the width of the footbridge from six feet. We're not looking for quads to go over this thing. It's a footbridge four feet wide, be raised up in the air feet off the deck, off the wetland edge, adequate for flow in sunlight, and uh, decking will be planked out, as most of it is now, and it's some plywood. It'll uh, range, and generally the widest is one and a half. Any other planking going in will be one and a half. And uh, we're still going to use those telephone poles. They'll have to be picked up in order to put the sauna under it. And we, this is our fourth one just recently, the last months of these foot bridges. And, we have to replicate. We just did one with five square feet of replication. Another one on subbed in with 20 square feet. But wherever that swano tube hits the ground, that has to be replicated. So we're modifying what's out there now, taking a hard look at how long it's been there. And we, and as far as EBT Inc., we're, we're, uh, we say that it hasn't been there that long. Sure. But, but it can be, can conform to the performance standards. There are no uh, yeah, that's that's fine. But I don't I don't care if you're reusing material. That, that yes. I, I'm just I'm just interested in hearing that the uh, entire original structure is going to be reformatted to conform with the the standards, and that is what you are proposing. Yes, sir, and that's what Mr. Baum, I believe, is uh, has a draft on, and I'm going to be looking at that draft. All right, Mr. Haldeman. Would you commit that what you're going to submit in time for us to review for the next meeting is going to put this freaking project to bed? I know I'm going to get some phone calls out there <laughs> for saying freaking, but come on, guys. This sucker has been going on forever, and I'm about an eighth of an inch away from saying we'll just deny this project you guys start over. You are building a new bridge, Glenn. You know, you, you're fine if you use the uh, those nice new telephone poles that we all agree are nice new telephone poles. But come on, guys, commit that you're going to put this thing to bed. But you've got to give us time to look at it. If you can't commit to that, then I'm going to recommend that we uh, deny this project. Let you guys have a nice fresh start. And uh, and have a go at it. I am really getting tired of this thing. Through Mr. Through Mr. Goodwin, if I can ask Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum, you believe when you went, you're right just there uh, because you took uh, my my advice, my recommendations on design. That I would fathom to th say that we should be able to wrap it up in a couple three days to get it back to Becky, possibly. And that's what I'm asking. I mean, clearly no. seven days before the next meeting, at least. But yeah, I just, I know, I understand the commission's uh, frustration here, but uh, I met with you two weeks ago, and yep. you wanted to see some forward movement on both of these projects, which, you know, we're trying to do as the consultant coming, we're trying to play catch up here. Um, so I've got ARCO project we were just on prior to that took a terribly long time to get a review letter from and now I'm under the gun for that one too and that review consultant was under your under your direction so I would like to you know push back against the Commission I, I appreciate some of your frustration mr. Halterman but um, we're not making a cheeseburger here the chairman I, I, I'm, I'm sure that with four feet wide, two feet off the deck, 
so many tubes to hold the thing in the air, ramps to come up on top of it, ramps to come up, back off, narrowing of it, proving that it is not an alternative analysis that trails through woodlands so many distances across wetlands in cases because that's the place to put them, not at the road where it might be the narrowest point. Well, we'll come up with uh, that. I would say that the plan most likely is 85% there, and I'm just going to be reviewing these last details. All right. Mr. Goodwin. Good. I, I got to ask the public. But go ahead, Dave. Mr. Baum, just so that you understand, our angst is not with you, sir. We sent out an enforcement order in June of last year, and we have had about 15 separate continuations given to us. And that's the frustration that Mr. Halterman was exhibiting. It does not have to do with your company or your performance. Right now, we appreciate the fact that within two weeks, you came up with a bloody plan. That puts you at least six months ahead of the previous groups that have been working with 508. So I'm, I'm sorry that we sounded like it was you, but it isn't. And so, yes, yeah. please, that, speak. David, thank you for pointing that out, and uh, I, I, I would agree. I am not in any way, uh, Mr. Baum, faulting you at this. It's this whole process and the whole thing about being told that was an old bridge, and you know, it, it's just been frustrating. All right, let's, I think we got to go to a continuation here. Yeah. We can do public uh, comment not. first. Yep, public comments, please. But can we ask for materials by that August 27th for the next public hearing so we don't get them the day of the meeting? Yep. And would you like to perform a site visit out there? Thank you. Is there anyone on the line from the public that would like to comment on 27 Lad Road? Public comment for 27 Lad Road? No, no public for that one. There ain't none. Should have, this is Stephen Chittister. I'd like to comment um, as a member of the public. I just quickly want to remind the commission that um, the activity that they are using this bridge for is part of a large facility, commercial facility, uh, based in Charlton that throughout the entire site approval process, there was never any mention of these trails or these bridges across wetlands. And the applicant has used these bridges for several uh, commercial events, Spartan races, Tough Mudder, you know, whatever. Um, I, I think that the commission needs to address the entire, um, you know, the entirety of this project the impact it's having on wetlands, uh, down gradient resources. Um, so again, as a member of the public, I'm going to ask the commission that uh, there's some third party review of this and that it's taken as a whole, um, not a segmented project. Thank you. I'd like to go in favor of a continuation. David Barnacle. Okay. Mr. Haldeman. Yeah, I'm in favor of a continuation. Eric. Yeah, I'm in favor of a continuation. And as but I don't I. know, I don't know that I will utter those words again. Thank you. All right. So continuation it is. Continue to right. seven thirty on September first. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Bert. You know, they're going to be here for a bit. Yep. Uh, we are now at 745. Uh, 205B and 205C, Podunk Pike. Uh, notice of intent, DEP file number 300. Do we have a number? We do not have a number. Of a TBA here. Do not have a number. Okay. Continued from August 4, 2020. R. Jennings, 508 International, applicant and owner of Brandt and Irish Jennings, owner D. O'Neill, 
representative development of recreational trails. Okay. Thank you. Is there a reason not to continue this? I beg your pardon, Dave. One, we don't have a number. My point exactly. Yeah. So, do we, do we have a plan? Yes. They did submit a draft plan for this today showing trail relocation. Um, we don't have a DEP file number today. I did look um, on their NOI lookup, um, and it doesn't even show that they've received the material, so it's unclear to me if they've actually even filed a copy of this with DEP. Um, I mean, as we mentioned at the last meeting, technically the application is incomplete, and I've asked them to go back and, and look at that and um, submit additional materials which haven't been submitted in addition we don't have a receipt that they filed it with DEP yet Wayne uh, Kowalski could speak and Mr. Baum is yep go ahead thank you uh, Mr. Baum and, and I discussed restoration of the wetlands with the uh, old logging trail which is now a running trail uh, travels through wetlands relocation it's also in the 25 foot notes so we have restoration on the plan for wetlands, uh, similar to what density and plant species are native and topsoil. That's on there. And then there is the restoration of the buffer zone within the 25 feet. And then there's the movement of the trail outside the 25 foot zone. No cutting of any trees, but just the trail that they would run on. Uh, it might be in the future as, as a member of the public. Brian, you're, you're, you're turning your head. This is a wetland location, wetland line. will probably be peer review in the end that the commission might request to look at the delineation uh, of the wetlands along here. But the, uh, the draft plan is in with restoration of buffer zones and restoration of wetlands. How many, how many feet of trails, Glenn, uh, go, by, go by and or around through wetlands? Mr. Bonham has linear feet on his plan, but I, I just heard the whole trail itself miles. I, I know we've walked it, and, and uh, it's extensive. I don't have the linear feet in front of me, Mr. Bonham. might have the square footage. Uh, the alteration, how much alteration is done for the wetlands, and how much alteration is done for the buffer zone. And, and this is a preliminary plan, or this is a, a firm plan that you've done? The wetland line is from, well, from outside of your peer review, we're looking at it. And uh, then this is the draft plan for restoration of, again, the buffer zone and restoration of the buffer zone. So, zone. Restoration yeah. of the buffer Another plan that I have to put my eyes on, I just received it also. So tomorrow, uh, we put eyes on it. I would take it that Mr. Baum has and I appreciate Mr. Baum and his company that will uh, do the, that's another 80% complete potentially and 20% of tweaking, erosion controls, making sure they're all where we want them to be. We did look at both these trail systems to make sure there's no erosion going into other wet, wet systems from the trail and that's, that's just uh, another aspect of it. There was a thing up earlier about uh, effect to wetlands downstream. Obviously that's our job to make sure that this running trail does not, even if it's a buffer zone, doesn't cause erosion. So we're, you're looking for a continuation on this by the by the verbiage. What you're saying is you haven't looked, you're going to look at it tomorrow? Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just received it. Yet, this will also still? be, uh, I'm sorry. David? Our, job be, our job will be to complete it and have it complete in time. There'll be at least seven days prior to the meeting. The plan will be in Rebecca's hand a lot sooner. I think like it. So, uh, um, you're breaking up on me again. Hoping we can have, we, yes, well, our, our job is to have it seven days prior to the meeting. Becky, uh, so can we set a site visit for um, the Tuesday prior? So, August 25th. This yeah, because I mean, you know, unless we go and take a look at this on the ground, 
um, you know, I think we're going to continue to have it slip sliding away. Yep. Yeah, and we, we can go that? to both. We can go to both. Okay. Glenn, can you arrange that with the applicant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, till, uh, 25th is, uh, I think that that's a sad day. A uh, Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Thank you. And, and generally, would that be early? 9, 10? Should we set that tomorrow? Or think we, can we can, you and I can maybe? set that tomorrow, but right, it probably would be, it'll be between 9 sure and 12, probably 9. Yeah. Thank you. We'll set that with the applicant and the engineer. David Barnacle in favor of a continuation. Okay. Uh, be, let's go to the audience before we. Um, Holly? Yes. Is there any public comment for 205B and 205C Podunk Pike? Notice of intent. Is there any public comment? No public. No public comment. Go ahead, David. In favor of a continuation, David Barnacle. David Barnacle. Stephen Halterman. Steve Halterman, I'm in favor. Eric? Yep, Eric Gaspar, I'm in favor. <clears throat> and Ed Goodwin, I'm in favor also. Thank you. Glenn Kowalski, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Thank you, Conservation Commission. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So it's 7:45 on August 1st. Uh, September 1st. All right. We are now at 365 New Boston Road. FKA 367 New Boston Road, lot 1R. Request for amendment DEP file number 300 Zero nine nine eight JK JC Katy Builders Inc. Is the applicant modify the limit slash scope of work for additional tree removal? Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll just start. I believe. Yeah. We, yeah. So I believe we ahead, have ahead. Um, the property owner applicant on the line. So this is. Um, Older permit, which uh, we do have a request to amend. We did um, have it on the agenda last time, but we had to continue it because we were waiting for abutter notifications. We do have those abutter notifications. Uh, site visit was performed yesterday to look at the modifications, um, including some tree removal, and uh, we developed a revised concept plan that the uh, property owner would like to move forward with. I did. Um, it was kind of last minute, so I did send that out yesterday, but I can bring it up to show you. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. We can go over that. So as you can see, this is um, a sketch, and I can zoom in if that's beneficial. It would be. All right. Yeah. Much better. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, sir. So as you can see, um, we do have the, the house is sited uh, further back on the, the property. Uh, this orange line um, depicts the original limit of work line. You can see it's pretty close to the wetlands over here. And then there was a area over here that was drawn um, to retain some tree cover on the site. So uh, it's a steep site that drops off. So there's a pretty long driveway that comes down to the back where the house was. And then further off the screen in this area is where this, the septic is. So what the new property owner would like to do is to be able to shift the house um, closer to the road, eliminating um, a lot of the work that needs to occur in the back portion of the site here. Um, so you can kind of see in the plan here, we have um, this kind of pink fuchsia color is the new proposed limit of work, which you can see um, comes down here and that's about 80 feet from the wetland line. I should have drawn that arrow all the way up. Um, and that area will allow for the original septic to go in the back. But the house significantly moves forward closer to the road, about 60 feet in the driveways minimized. Um, and then in the top portion, there still would be retention of trees here. So this is um, kind of conceptual as it was 
drawn up. It is sketched to scale. Um, I think that this plan, and I do have some recommendations for conditions, which I can go into afterwards, um, would be a much better outcome, thinking about the amount of clearing that's going to be minimized out here. Um, you know, we're going from 25 feet to the wetland to the nearest point, I think is 40 feet over there. Um, so I think this would be a great outcome here. And I think that, you know, we can approve this provided that, you know, the engineered as built is is sent in and I have a couple other recommendations for conditions there was some clearing that occurred out there part of the site visit was to see where um, where that clearing occurred and where these additional um, pine trees that they're asking to be removed would be taken out so with this revised line um, we would have three pine trees we counted that would be outside of the limit of work that they would still be asking to take down two which would be up here where my cursor is so that's um, pretty far from resource area it's well outside the hundred foot and then one which was um, down here in this area just outside probably the, the limit of work as well uh, that one had some significant damage you could see on the the top portion of it where the bark was taken away so I don't, I don't have any concerns with that um, I don't know if the the property owner has anything they want to add this time. All right. Holly, can we hear from the property owner? I believe. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Is there anything you want to add, Jesse? Um, no, I think, I think everything that we needed to get out is there. Um, I think this is a better situation. For both. Okay. All right. Um, to the board. Mr. Barnacle, any comments? No comments. Mr. Halderman, you've been out there. Yeah, I've been out there a couple of times, and I really <laughs> like this plan. It was great, uh, great brainstorming with the uh, with Becky and with the landowner. Uh, I think they came up with a really good solution in reducing the uh, impact of the wetlands, reducing uh, the size of the uh, limit of work, and uh, that, and uh, Becky hadn't mentioned it yet, but uh, we talked about some additional plantings to uh, replace some trees that have been cut down outside the limit of work, but uh, in the area of the the yard, as it were. So yeah, I'm, I'm really in favor of this plan. Eric, yeah, no comment. And Stephen, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, no, I I have no problem with it. Other than I went out there and it wasn't Mark, and I uh, had been promised that it would be. So, but it is an improvement. Um, I'd like to see if there's anybody in the audience. Is there any public comment yeah. for 365 New Boston Road? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Oh uh, yes, I live. Um, I bought this a property, and I have a couple questions. Uh, I've been working on this project since 2017, and with conservation. And I thank you, Becky, for all your work. Um, we've gone over most of the things. I've gone over with Becky, but I do have some questions. Um, the builder came in, and he was ready to just tear down all the trees before um, I stopped him. So my main concern is the fact that um, he doesn't do that again. And the parking of the logging truck, the logging truck was prepared to take down all the trees on the left-hand side of the property where the wetlands were. And if I wasn't out there to stop them, they would have all been gone. He took out substantial tr trees on the area that you're talking about for restoration. So I want to make sure that those trees get replaced. That wasn't even supposed to be touched. In the original okay, plan. As we face the site to the right. The space to the left as you're looking Shoot. at the wall. Yeah, I think it, where my cursor is, she's talking about this okay, area. Right um, I mean, and, I, and I did walk in that area. There was a 
a large tree that was down there, but that was um, had a lot of dead wood and rot to it. So I think that that tree was already um, down. I did walk and did see some resprouting growth on some smaller stumps. So th that is one of the areas that was going to be part of my recommendations that there there is some some planting here. But it didn't seem, um, you know, where we flagged, where we measured out and flagged, it, it, it really seemed like a lot of the, the clearing did occur within the limit of work. So I, I, my recommendation would be at least um, two deciduous trees um, planted in this area, and I would recommend that um, we have those planted initially because we are going into, um, you know, the fall, and they are going to start building this, and the intent is to sell the property. So I think it would be in their best interest in ours to have those plantings put in as a condition um, initially um, as the project gets started to make sure that's that's done so that way it doesn't become an issue when there is a property transfer um, in the middle of the winter. So I would recommend it at, at least two trees in that area with probably, you know, like a DBH of 1.5 um, so that way that they, you know, have a chance and they're there working yeah. on the site and they can water it and make sure that it gets, um, gets established before the end of the growing season. Uh, Becky, what happened to the two for one replacement when someone takes down trees illegally? Thank you. So as I said, I mean, we marked that limit of work there and they're really, from what I saw from walking that area, there wasn't many trees that came down there. Um, I mean, I counted, I believe there was two stumps besides like that one large dead tree that I talked about that would appear outside of that. So, I mean, the area, you know, Steve Halterman and I looked at it, and in that area, the, the size of that area, and there's a right-of-way adjacent to the road there. I mean, I don't know that it could support, you know, if you put in six trees there, that they'll be able to grow and prosper there with what's existing there. So I don't know if, Steve, you have any additional comments on amount of trees in that area? Uh you know, maybe maybe we ought to put in some uh, either some understory trees or uh, some shrubs because there there are plenty of trees in that area. That is true. No, that's a good recommendation. But they ought to put something in there, something. Yeah, but when they put shrubs on the order of the house, to. so what about on the house? So you could do having trouble hearing. So you could do two trees, and then I, I, do you want a, a number of shrubs in size and particular species that you might be interested in that we can add into the permit? Well, I think you should bring the number back up to six since you saw a three stump, and a resident seems to think that it might be higher. But how about if you did the two trees and four shrubs and make the four shrubs something that is local to the areas and they have to be somewhat on uh, which side of, of um, New Boston? It's on the, the Cedar Lake side of New Boston. Correct. Correct. Right. Um, so the tree cover would shade it for at least half the day. You wouldn't have to worry about that. Almost any of the normal um, berry bearing bushes would survive quite nicely. So I would suggest four and two. I like that. Who was that? That was Mr. Halton. Steve Halton. Mr. Halton, okay. May I make a comment? Yes. Yeah. So my only concern is the fact that we went through with this with the lot next to them on 367 and the bushes that they planted are about six inches tall and they were like abravite but we don't want either of those arborvitae are six inch tall bushes specific on what is get plant what gets planted there that's one of the reasons ma'am that i mentioned very very bushes because that sort of restricts them from being able to plant arborvitae in the first place and secondly most of the nurseries have very very bushes that are at least two to three feet tall in the springtime so you plant them now they'll do quite well so 
public public comment. Who, Hello. Who? Yes. Um, Hello. Is, yeah. Uh, so, if, if you're completed, if she, if this previous comment is completed. Well, can you just state your name, please? Uh, yeah. I mean, I just. This is Lewis. Okay, sorry, keep going. I just saw what happened on the lot next door, and we did pretty much tell him what was supposed to be done. So I know, I know Becky has seen the bushes, and I, don't you agree, Becky, that those weren't the proper bushes that were put in? Yeah, that, that wasn't the <laughs> intent of the commission. That permit's not closed yet, so we're, we're not done with that one yet. Um, we're still working on that one. I just don't want to see the same thing happen. Because I agreed to that because I think, okay, that's great. And then I saw that happen, and I'm just trying not to have it repeat itself. Well, we also will have the two-year restriction, Becky, on giving a certificate of compliance. Yeah, but we should um, we should solidify what we're going to receive as we give the approval on the on the project. Be Becky, you want to take a look at this with uh, Mr. Katie and and uh, come up with a recommendation. Do you mean in terms of species? So I Make think you could day. condition it if the two trees for native berry bearing shrubs um, and the siting of those, the actual placement location can be determined in the field with myself, if that's okay with you. Yeah. And then we'd be specific. Like that would be what I'd like. And you include, with my recommendation, the one and a half dBH on the trees, uh, deciduous either oaks or maples. I think oaks would probably be good for there. Yes. Okay, I can yeah. add that as a condition. Yeah, it sounds good. All right, great. I believe we have someone else on the Any line. Any further discussion? Uh, Eric? Yes. Do we have someone else on the line? Uh, yes. Okay. This is Lewis Fazen calling, F-A-Z-E-N, from 146 Lane 8. Now, I received a notice as an abutter on the downhill side of this property. And I would like to make a couple comments. The first one is it is very important to specify exactly what you want planted because there's a difference between six inch bushes and six foot trees and they have to be watered and cared for uh, in this area. It's very sandy because uh, we, we've we already experienced this uh, infringement on property and, and very tiny little PMJ bushes were planted uh, which are very unsatisfactory. So I think it needs to be very clearly specified um, or it won't be done. The second part is uh, I am concerned about the wetlands uh, and if we don't have adequate trees and plants going, uh, there's a very steep incline from New Boston Road going all the way down uh, to the lake, um, South Pond. So uh, it is really important to have planting and to, to make sure that the, there's a diversion of water and absorption of water uh, during the stormy kind of weather which we are uh, like, likely to have going forward. Um, the, there is a wetland which connects, I believe, I don't have in front of me your screen, so I'm on, a, I'm on a phone calling in today. I don't have that screen in front of me, but if that wetland connects over to the wetland on lane 8, um, there, there, there are two homes going up on <coughs> lane 8 next to our property. That wetland is being infringed upon by um, a great deal of uh, debris piling up into the wetlands. And so the whole wetland area, I think, uh, needs another look at uh, to make sure that these uh, tree removals uh, are not causing new problems, which are going to end up uh, flowing into South Pond. So I would like to ask Becky, to, who was very good, to come out. She's been out a number of times to check on the Lane 8 development uh, to take a look at the wetlands there to make sure that that's uh, 
they're still uh, going to be wetlands after after the homes are built. So, and and I yep. I would agree that we the the whole tree business uh, that, that's been an enormous amount of deforestation, and it is a scenic road. And I wanted to make sure with the conservation commission that all the homes along the road have adhered to the scenic road conditions of removing trees and not removing trees, you know, on the roadside. And I don't know all the details of that, but I'm sure the conservation could take a look at that as well. Um, yeah, I can, I can check with DPW. I'm not sure if they issued the driveway permit yet, but that usually is part of, that starts with that process. So, I, I mean, I can check in with DPW. I know they've been out there. I'm not sure if they've issued a driveway permit um, to date. But for example, you can issue a driveway permit. Now, 375 New Boston Road, I think, had a driveway permit. They took down a bunch of trees and then moved the driveway to a different place. So the trees have never been replaced. And that, that two for one formula, that's at 375 New Boston Road. Yeah, me, um, I don't know that that's a, we have a wetland permit for that property. So, I mean, our two for one wouldn't apply for something that wasn't. Um, Part of a wetland review. Yeah. No, this I'm talking about the scenic road, the scenic road part. Uh, they had a driveway permit, but then moved, took down the trees, but then moved the driveway anyway to a different area. So those were not replaced. That's it. As that's Becky said, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a DPW. Scenic scenic roads are not the responsibility of the conservation commission. So, I mean, you know, if there's water involved, we would be, just, wetlands just, involved, we would be. Excuse me one second, just to add something. We, we also added an extra 80 feet of buffer from the wetland just to ease some people's minds uh, in the back of this lot. Yeah. So just to try and help the situation, that's where we're at. Um, we don't mind doing the plantings in the front if that appeases the neighbors. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I, um, that we need for bushes and trees. Right. That's fine with us. We just would like to move forward with our move project. Forward with the project, right? Yeah. Anything else from the commission? Is there anybody else, uh, Holly, that would like to speak from the audience? <laughs> Why don't you say you'd like to have Becky come out and check? No, <laughs> there's no other public. All right. Oh, could I just? Um, uh, this, who's this? Can I just clarify that? This is uh, Lewis Faison again, just to clarify that uh, Becky will be out to look at the wetlands along Absolutely. On, on the Lane 8 side. Thank you. Yep. You know, uh, Lewis, you know who owned this land? Yes, I do. Same people that owned Ireland. Town. What? Yeah, it's right. It's the same yeah. family that owned the land that we're on. Yep. Yep. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Can we move this um, along, gentlemen? Any, um, Mr. Barnacle, anything? I think. Steve. Nothing more. Steve in, yeah. Steve in. No, I don't have any. Nope. I don't have anything right. additional. Steve and I don't no, have anything additional. Do uh, so I would like a recommendation to close the public hearing. Steve Alderman, I move that we close the public hearing. I have a second. Eric Gaspar, second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Stephen? Stephen Chittister in favor of closing. Uh, Eric? Eric Gaspar in favor of closing. David? David Barnacle in favor of closing. Steve? Steve Holterman in favor of closing. And Ed Goodwin in favor of closing. Um, would anybody like to make a recommendation? Yes, I make a recommendation that we approve the um, 365 New Boston Road. What do we got? Box 1R. Uh, anyway, file number 300-0998. The condition yep. indicated already by the agent, including the planting as described. 
Yeah, the replanting, yeah. All right, do I have a second? Yep. Eric Gaspar, second. Discussion? All in favor? Yes, Steve Halterman. Oh, well, hang on. Uh, oh, did you Becky, have discussion? So you're Steve? going to. Yeah, I think you asked for discussion. I did. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to discuss. Becky, uh, you're going to put some uh, language in there about the height of the bushes and berry bearing and. Correct. And, uh, two years to. Uh, for growing, monitoring, all, everything. Yep. Uh, make sure. Two trees as discussed, four shrubs, uh, two year growing season monitoring um, the specific sizes, and that um, I'll go out and help them cite the locations for those within that area we discussed. In addition, just, just so you're aware, I mean, I would add all of our typical pre construction conditions, including obviously installation, installation of erosion co controls. Per a staked out survey from a land surveyor, we'll have a pre-construction meeting before any work occurs, uh, meeting the builder uh, and the contract, all the contractors, including tree contractor on site. Um, in addition, uh, we would I would ask too that they keep the and they've already committed to it, but just to add it in there that the the drainage swale along the driveway, and then uh, the submission of the as built as built plan, which reflects the. Um, the two scale sketch revision um, on here of 8 17 2020. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All in favor? One, one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, on, the wetland, on the wetland area. Um, Who's this? This is Jesse and Katie. So they were calling for. Uh, no, the meeting's been. I'm uh, sorry, it's been closed. Okay. It, it's Jesse nothing on your, uh, on your property. What? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, all in favor? Mr. Barnacle? David Barnacle in favor. Steve Halterman? Steve Halterman in favor. Eric Gaspar? Eric Gaspar in favor. Stephen Chidester? Stephen Chidester in favor. And Ed Goodwin in favor. All right. We're two back. Uh, just quickly, uh, there was one more. I just don't want to miss it because it's in with the other ones we already did. There's one more request for certificate compliance. Uh, this is for 84 McGargle Road. It's DEP file number 300-1024. This is a raise and rebuild on Lead Mine Pond. Uh, project has been completed. I went out last week and did a site visit. Um, I don't have any concerns with the project as constructed. There was no uh, replacement plantings required, so there's no need to um, delay the certificate of compliance um, as related, similar to the other one. So I have no concerns and recommend approval of a complete certificate of compliance. David Barnacle approves. Good. Steve Alderman. Steve Alderman approves. Eric. Eric Gaspar approves. Steven. Steven Chittister approves. Ed Goodwin approves. All right, and then I just see that we have um, Dave Brunel on here. Uh, Dave, I just want to let you know that we already had your public hearing earlier for 229 Podunk Road. Uh, Marianne was on, and that was approved. Uh, moving forward under old business, we have, um, we have the Rampco slash Hamilton Rod and Gun Club enforcement order that was issued last year. We do have everyone on here for an update. I don't know if Jonathan, do you wanna start with giving an update for the board? Uh, yeah, too. so today uh, they actually, Hydrograss Technologies sprayed, uh, resprayed everything with the biometric mix and the um, mass salt mix that was you guys spec'd out. Um, all the regrading has been done. The speed levelers, if you will, the drainage uh, pipe has been installed. Um, we spread some mulch. We have a couple more loads of mulch to spread to extend that area down to that last attention basin. And then the last remaining item is the diverting of the pipe that goes into from the last attention basin into the existing 
catch basin on in the parking lot it was suggested that we take that pipe out and rerun it to the existing riprap outfall so that just has to be completed so we're probably you know 90 percent 95 percent complete today right. any comments from the board we took a site visit Stephen, anything from you? No? Steve Alderman, you were there. Yeah, uh, no, I don't have any comments. And Becky was out there after all of us. Uh, she was out there yesterday, right, Becky? Yep, yep, so I did go out yesterday and I did see, um, I did see some of the modifications that were done out there and then, right, he said that today they went out and hydro seeded. So I haven't, I haven't been out there since then, I but won. yeah. It, Good. It looks like, um, I mean, you know, we had uh, Summit Engineering went out for them and kind of took a look at everything because what was implemented in the field wasn't necessarily what was shown on that original Barton plan. So um, Andy Baum's on here. He did go out there and, and look at that. I think that, and I can ask him to add in a moment, I think that they did address their concerns out there. Um, and this diverting of the pipe would appear to be the last thing um, also provided we want to make sure that the hydro seed takes and that some of those areas get get stabilized but I think moving forward we're we're in a, a pretty good position um, that I would think that they've addressed a lot of the things in our enforcement order uh, that's still um, open at this time I guess I would just say you know we'll have to wait until that diverting of the pipe occurs because I think that's necessary and make sure the 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 site's fully stabilized um, Andy did mention to me as well that the back basin, they did shoot the grades out there and um, didn't have any concerns, but Andy, I'll let you add on for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I walked the site Friday uh, just to reiterate the same progress that Jonathan and, and Becky had talked about with the exception of seeding. And there was one load of mulch out there that had been spread out and looked pretty good. Um, that back basin, the uh, one kind of be behind the pistol range. Um, when we located that, one of the things we talked about doing was just checking the shots to make sure there wasn't a quote unquote dip in the berm. And we verified those shots and, and provided Jonathan and the uh, Rod and Gun Club those as built shots just so they could see um, that it's more of a, sometimes grades can get tricky in terms of an optical illusion of what you're seeing, but there's, there's no change, no problem there. Good. All right, gentlemen, that's just an update on old business, so it um, really isn't anything. I just have one question. Jonathan, when do you think that um, you guys will be able to divert that, that pipe? Oh, as noted in the email earlier, uh, we have pipe getting delivered Friday. Okay. Uh, it's just trying to balance our schedule between guys being on vacation and other jobs going on. We're hoping within the next two to three weeks we can get that pipe diverted, and um, you know, we do have some riprap on site to extend the back of that. Uh, rip wrap swale like we talked about if uh when we do that becky if you want i can give you a day's notice if you want to come out and if, like i mentioned in that email earlier if i got if you want me to add some we can always bring some more rip wrap in we probably have like eight or ten yards on site okay. um you know, whatever works for you you know okay yeah no, i think that'd be useful I, I guess i'm just asking time frame because we can add this you know once the pipe gets done hopefully yep. the site's growing by then and then we can add this back on and the commission right. can dust can discuss closing out the permit there and potentially the enforcement order. So then you can kind of move forward with your board of selectmen process. So we might be in a good position for the next meeting, if not maybe the mid-September one. When is your next meeting? September 1st. First. Two weeks. September 1st, and what's the one after that then? Uh, two weeks after that. Okay, the 15th, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I know in my schedule when, uh, like a day or two before, I can shoot everybody an email and keep everyone up to date with what's going on. And if you want to, like I said, you're more than welcome to come out and see what we're doing. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Have a good yeah. What else, Beck? So I was asked to add review of enforcement orders on the agenda. And then also um, under old business, I was asked to add the DP file number 300-1041 for 31 South Shore Road for discussion. 31 South Shore Road. 
<laughs> Come on, Ed, you know it well. <laughs> I do, but Heck, I go even, blank. Even I, I know it well now. Eric, Eric even knows it well now. <laughs> I think I got right, yelled at on that update on 31. The, the dam is getting bigger and you sent a letter, right? Yes. Yep. Let me grab my notes. So I went out and reviewed the culvert. So just so the commission's aware, uh, KP Law on behalf of the town through Board of Health um, did issue a complaint for civil contempt in regards to the beaver dam on the site. So one of the court ordered items was to keep the culvert um, in the inlet area of the culvert um, clear, so to allow for free flowing water. Don't quote me on how that was said exactly, but um, so there was a beaver dam that was noted out there um, in May. Myself and the Board of Health agent did go out to take a look at it. There was still water flowing in the area. We just went out for a site visit just to have a look. Um, that beaver dam has grown substantially since there since that time So the Board of Health um, and KP law are pursuing that so I went out Last week and took a look at it and like I said it was much larger than it previously was when I went out there um, And it didn't appear that um, Water was free flowing through the culvert at that time. So I did um, give that update to town council um, in addition, um, there was some concerns with the drainage improvement project that was out there. As you remember, we issued a permit, which was then superseded. Uh, it was appealed, and it was superseded by DEP. Um, that project uh, was initiated last fall, early winter. Um, from my understanding, um, the project has been completed. Um, however, there was some concerns raised in June by an abutter in the area. And there was some correspondence. I reached out to the engineer who um, provided um, some information to DEP, and they had some correspondence back and forth about that. So I did try to follow up with DEP, and I haven't received a reply yet to see where that stands with them. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there has not been a certificate of compliance issued for that through DEP, and I'm not aware that. Um, the town is taking any any action on that um, with that said I'm, I'm not aware that it's not in compliance with DEP at this time either however we haven't had any rain events to monitor it recently so okay all right mr. chair yes this is Stephen Chittister I'd, I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, summarize Rebecca's findings in a letter that can be addressed to uh, it's my understanding that the court is still um, I guess the the court case is pending the completion of these items and the continued um, keeping the culvert open so I guess I'd make a motion that we just summarize this in a letter and, and address it to the court so that they, they're they aware that there are some outstanding issues at this property. Excellent, do I have a second? I'll second it. David Steve Martin. Altman, I'll second that. <laughs> Dave and I second it. All right, you got a combination second it. Um, yeah, I, I really feel that um, it's a perfect timing for such a letter because um, they have gone back to the court to try and get um, off of, uh, it's my understanding, I don't, you know, that off of the responsibility for keeping the, uh, the, be the culvert open. And um, it, it's my understanding that the court said that it had to be kept open in perpetuity, and I want to make sure that it continues that way. So um, I think a letter to the court at this time would be perfect summarizing everything that, that from our point of view. And Mr. Barnacle? Chair, uh, this is Stephen again. Could I uh, add to that that, um, so there, I guess currently there's a parking space where the, um, where the stormwater drains to, and I think that that was, that was a feature that was not on the approved plan. 
And I, I believe Becky noted that it was within the area of disturbance. However, there was um, language in the original approval that all temporarily disturbed areas should be restored. Um, so I think that would include that, that parking area, unless I'm mistaken. Okay. No, I remember that same wording, Stephen. Okay. So I just like that included that, that that should be part of the, you know, the action that's taken to remediate the site. Okay. No problem. Thank you. So, uh, are we all in favor? David Barnacle in favor. Steve Halderman. All right, Gas Barn in favor. Steve Halderman in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Stephen Chittister in favor. <laughs> Excuse me. Becky, anything else going on? Yeah, there's two things that um, are on here that are taken off. One is new business. Uh, Big Elm drawdown date request. Uh, we were asked by um, someone from the Lake Association to put a placeholder on here as they're having a meeting uh, to discuss the lake drawdown. Um, they're still reviewing that, so there's no discussion of that this evening. And then under letter permits, I had the 367 New Boston Road. Um, that was came up earlier. They still have an active permit, um, and they're putting a garage on the house. Now, when they sent the plan i reviewed the initial plan that was approved and it did show a garage structure on there so the new house and the garage square footage is actually smaller than what was originally approved so i don't see that as a need for any additional permitting um, i think that's clearly covered under that existing um, approval that's open so that doesn't need to be on here um, but i didn't have the, the the plan in time when we issued this so Last item is review of enforcement orders. Holly put together a list which was provided to you with um, all of the enforcement orders that we could locate dating back to 2014. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that. That was one of the reasons I asked for it at the last meeting because I knew there were some oldies but goodies in there. Yeah. One of the things that I would suggest is that we take a look at it before the September 1st meeting and see which ones we can deal with quickly because most of the work has already been accomplished. Which ones only need to have a site inspection before yeah. they can be closed out. And I will bet you we can take about 35 to 50% of these right off the list. Yep. Do you want me to go down the list and give you an update where they stand? I think that would be really good. Okay, so so violation type enforcement actions for 2020. Uh, the most recent one we have, which did not result in the issuance of enforcement order, it didn't involve, result in a cease and desist. It is a violation, which was 118 Lead Mine Lane. Um, they did come back a few meetings ago and did show that concept plan uh, for the house to seek permission for a perk test. Uh, the next step, I think how you instructed them was to submit a notice of intent for the restoration work um, and their house. I did try to follow up since that meeting um, and I did speak to them um, right after the meeting, um, which was the July, the beginning July meeting we had, July 7th. Um, I spoke to them the day after. I followed up a few times, but have not heard from them, so I'm not sure when that application is coming in. My only fear with that one is that if that doesn't perk appropriately, that they'll just conveniently forget to come back to us. So we yeah. need to make sure we keep our foot on the uh, on the gas on those guys. Yeah, sorry, I should have added, they did have the perk test done, and um, it's my understanding from speaking to the Board of Health agent that it did pass. So I guess one thing to keep in mind, you know, it would be useful to know when they're going to be submitting for that, especially because we do have those wetland areas in the restoration. Um, and we do have, I mean, it is mid August here. So thinking about having that restoration work done, um, obviously that's gonna need to be done during the, the growing season, so. Becky, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, there's also 
the issue of an alternative uh, driveway location. And, uh, and that wetland restoration also needs to include repl- uh, restoring that stream that they made Yep. in order to drain that wetland. Yep. Steve, I'm not sure so, if you uh, weren't at that July meeting, but the concept plan they did come back with did show relocating that driveway as we discussed out in the field. Um, it had some notes about restoration, uh, which, I mean, the plan came in that day, so no one really had a chance to look at it. I did, when I followed up with them, let them know that all you really approved at that time was the perk test that um, wetland restoration, I think the notes on the plan was add topsoil and seed it, that you you know, you would be looking for more detail than that and, you know, different sections of the wetland would probably require different restoration and that I could work with their consultant to develop that, but I I haven't heard anything since then. Right, and another thing too, when when we were out there, uh, they'd already started clearing. They took a lot of trees down Yep. And uh, as I recall, there was a lot of uh, exposed soil. So somewhere in there, and that's all, you know, down downhill to uh, down gradient for sedimentation uh, to occur back into that wetland. So I can't remember if they had some uh, erosion controls in place. Uh, but anyway, that's something that we really need to look at. Yep. Make sure that they're... Uh, all that destruction that they did at the top of the hill is not going to slide down, cause soil to slide down into that wetland. Are you requesting a... This is Stephen. All right. This is Stephen. Um, I also want to add that there was still some question about the uh, consultant that they had hired, whether it was actually a wetland scientist or not. So I don't, I don't want to lose sight of that particular um, detail. Do you want me to follow up with a letter? Well, I, well, I raised that issue at the at the last meeting, Steve Halderman. I raised that issue and I asked why they didn't get a an actual wetland restoration person, like you had said. And you know, they said, "Well, you know, we couldn't find one." And you'd given them the names and called them, and they didn't call back and we never did bother to call the third one i thought the whole thing was lame but uh anyway i was overruled that the guy that did it does indeed have experience so i, I, but I don't I, think, I think that's that might true be steve well dave barnacle uh, no there's no other dave sorry i mean didn't you say yeah this guy knows what he's doing no, what I said was I looked him up online and found that he was a planner and he was the president of a planning company. Not an environmental scientist, but a planner. His company has appeared before the planning board several times, but not about environmental issues, only about planning. Well, we got, well that's I, don't know I, heard. Wanna, I don't know that we want to go back and... and Go chapter and verse on, on this one, you know, site. Becky, you know, we we should send him a note and check to see what his status is now that he has an approved perk. Because if we don't push him and make him know we're around, he um, Good point. God knows what you're going to end up with. Agreed. Yeah, this guy. What else, Becky? You got some more there? Oh, yeah. Uh, All right. So, two Cedar Lake Drive. This was one issued in February. Uh, We did have a meeting with them. Um, They did do a lot of the restoration on the site. And where we left it was that we would not close the enforcement order. We were going to wait till October to do another site inspection to see how that restoration took. Um, In addition, at that time, if the site's okay, we would close out their certificate of compliance. So, that one is okay as is, and we will be following up on that soon. It looked good the last time I went by, but, um, you know, when part of his work is, is um, logging, I mean, you know, firewood, you know, it's just going to end up the same as it was in another six months. Okay. So we just have to watch it. Yeah. 
All right. That's um, an opinion. Next is 36 Goodrich Road. This was issued uh, January of this year. It was a violation of the permit that was issued. Uh, we did work to resolve that with him. A new uh, notice of intent and orders of conditions were issued for that. Um, he has been doing the restoration work out there. Uh, you would be happy to know that he actually removed all of the deck structures down by the water and does not want to put them back. So um, I, I haven't uh, corresponded with him recently, but I was out there a few times once he started. Uh, they were having a concern with getting um, plants. I gave him the names of some other places to try to outreach to for the plantings. Um, that's another one where we're gonna look at um, prior to the end of the growing season to see where they're at with, with that, so. Good, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 2019. What else? What? what? Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. All right. It is, this is a, all a nightmare for Barnacle and myself. We're just going to have a nightmare when we go to bed. These are all going to be coming through our... Uh, yeah, that's, a, but, so, that's what you get for being on here this long. So, oh, my God. But don't so, quit. What's next? Don't quit. So 2019, we had the Nine Holland Road one, which was issued in October. We were discussing that this evening. Um, we'll yeah. be working that out with them. Uh, 158 Lake Road, that was the unpermitted tree removal. We did work out a restoration plan with them, issued a permit. They, similar to 36 Goodrich Road, had till the end of the growing season to get those plantings in. Uh, we recently did follow up with them and they did inform us that they're moving forward with that um, in the near future. So they're gonna be getting those plantings in soon. Good. All right. <coughs> 27 Lad Road, issued June 2019. I think we got that one down. Yep, 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 that's what I was going to say. Uh, we really, you know, and we actually don't want to talk about active ones that have just been before us. It's like... Oh, no, that's fine. I'm just going over the, the list and yeah. those ones I was just going to say, right, we're addressing yeah. those, so... 30, yeah. 33 Arnold Road, that's that St. Anne Cemetery. That was one that... Um, I think the last correspondence I had with them, I went through my records today, uh, was uh, last year. They had cleaned up the site, if you remember, and they had seeded. Seed hadn't taken. They probably needed to plant some more. Um, and then this spring, um, I didn't have any correspondence with them. So I did email today to follow up. I did take a ride through the site. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, it mostly looks like that you know, they're, they're still stockpiling in that back area, but that whole area where we had the issue looks okay. It looks like maybe there was a little bit of additional right. stockpiling. So I did email him to follow up with him on that, where they had seeded some of the grass took. Um, it's kind of sandy over there and, and shady, but there's no erosion issues over there. So I think, um, like I said, I just emailed him today to follow up with him and um, hoping that we can kind of create something for over there. You know, we worked out some sketches with him of use areas that we can get them to finally commit to that. It might be useful to have some like signage over there, no dumping, things like that. Um, but like I said, I I'm, I'm just followed up with them, so we'll keep working on that. No current wetland issues that I, that I saw when I went out there. Next. Okay. Um, is that it? No. So we've got. It's only page one. <laughs> More pages. All right. Well, I'll keep going. Thirty River Road, <laughs> Pine Lake Resort. That, grown, that was issued this year and released. Um, I mean, we had discussion about it at the last meeting. There's, you know, I followed up with them since the meeting and gave them um, a bulleted thing of items that would appear to be needed to be addressed uh, moving forward. Um, I did receive a reply this afternoon and I did not print it, um, you, you know, just saying that they're, they're working on submitting some of those things to us and they're planning a soft opening um, sometime probably mid-September. So uh, nothing in there about the uh, wetland assessment, though, that I noted. 
All right. Next. Uh, Mass DOT 595 Main Street. Um, this is the one right next to Nine Holland Road with that outfall pipe. Um, that one, I last corresponded with them in February. I believe I printed it, but I, I asked them. Here it is, my friend Bill Clowardy. Uh, February 6th, he replied to me. Uh, they were doing some work to assist with the cleanup for the Nine Holland Road, but they said. He says, as I mentioned earlier, they've engaged a consulting firm to investigate the drainage system in the area, and they've developed concept plans for the district review. review. They're continuing to investigate this, including additional survey and drainage system mapping work. The <coughs> district will continue to keep the town in the loop as the effort moves forward. So, I mean, that was February. Um, I just emailed him today to follow up on it because we haven't um, had any communication on that. Uh, Hamilton Rod and Gun Club is the last one for 2019. We don't need to talk about it because we already talked about it earlier. We're making some progress there. 2018, we have Mass DOT Cedar Lake. Um, we recently had. Oh, wait a minute. We're getting to nine. You know, we're getting to nine o'clock, and Holly said we have to be done by nine. I'm moving fast. Yeah. We've got bets right, on keep time moving. here. No, I was kidding. All right. So 2018, Mass DOT Cedar Lake. Um, that's the, the big drainage failure with the turnpike. Uh, making good progress there. I actually have a site visit with Mass DOT and the contractor tomorrow to go over their work plan to f address those final um, project drainage improvements they need to do. So that's underway. Um, yep. 270, it's 272. Yeah, Big Allen Road. That's the one we discussed tonight where they've pretty much done everything. Um, they revised their permit, got it amended. And the site's done, but we're going to keep it open to do the, the plant monitoring, which I'll let them know. 2017, we could not find any enforcement orders that were issued. And then 2016, there was 63 Beach Ave. That was a patio that was put in. Um, that one we closed out um, um, and issued a certificate of compliance for for that open order. Um, they took out the concrete patio, put in pervious, and did some planting. So that one's done. Nine Holland Road again. This is another enforcement order you guys issued in 2016. They got a permit to do the restoration work, and that's the permit that they violated. So, um, but right, like we said earlier, we're working on that. Uh, then there was 460 Lead Mine Road issued in March of 2016. Uh, this was before all of these were before my time, but this one I believe um, was uh, completed. That's the one that Kravosky did that wetland restoration with. I believe you mentioned before that you were happy with the um, wetland restoration out there, but I can follow up on that, but I'm pretty positive that that one's done, permitted. Okay? Yep. All right. Um, 2015, we have Nine Holland Road again, September 3rd, 2015. Um, then we have eight, 8 Birch Street. This was September 2015. This was uh, the previous property owner. There was the deck and that was put on. Those concrete little posts are still sitting out there, but the deck was removed. Uh, there was right. one for Sturbridge Outdoor World. Looks like there was a private camper that um, put some sand on the shoreline. Um, I wasn't familiar with this one, so I'm not 100% sure if that's been resolved. So I can look into that. And then... Yeah, no, it was resolved. Okay, check. Uh, then there was one for the Laurel Wood subdivision when that was underway in July of 2015. <clears throat> it looks like that was a erosion control issue. I'm assuming that one's been long resolved because that permit's been closed out and fully built. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, at, at risk, what I would like to do is to go back to the outdoor world thing. Since it has not been looked at, since 2015, even if you think that it was completed at that time, some of the things that we saw when we went out there five years ago were not in compliance and we didn't say anything about them because we wanted them to fix the problem with the um, hand-built dam. But I think it would be worthwhile just taking a site visit for the agent to see if everything is still in compliance. Remember, it is a wet area, it is a pond, and it does get boating activity and lots of campers all summer. 
I have no problem with that. I mean, you know. Okay. We Thank haven't you. had any reports of anything there. We didn't have reports of previous time either. Somebody stumbled on it. I mean, I've been out yeah, there. I think for... That's a good idea, Dave. <clears throat> I agree with you. All right. So, who's doing that? Am I, am I going out there? That went. Yes, please. There. I'll add that on. All right, 2014, 261 Holland Road. Uh, looks like there was an area, maybe, let's see, hold on. Within the buffer zone. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about it's that. It's all one. set. Perfect. Yep, it's all done. All right, 29 yep. Main Street. He raised horses and uh, okay. he had Good. a wetland next to his house. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, 29 Main Street. I don't know anything about this one. Recently, there's a cleared area near the rear of a building, wood chips, boulders. Oh, yeah, we're all set there. Barnacle straightened them out on that. Good. It was behind the building. <laughs> okay. Yes, it was. Um, oh, David. Then we've got 30 Camp Road, issued September 2015. Uh, looks like soil in the buffer zone along Pond was disturbed along a steep slope. Concrete patio installed. Do you, I, don't, I don't know anything about that one. I don't remember it. Dave? I'm trying to remember it. I even tried to remember it when I read this last week. Um, I don't know. All right, well, we'll look into it. Long pond. Mm. That's it. All right. Thanks for being yeah, in. Thank, thank you, Becky. Done. Thank Holly, too. She put the list together. <laughs> thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Okay, it's 9.02. I'm past my time, but just quickly, uh, just want to let you know, uh, right, we have uh, site visits that we're scheduling um, for 8.25. Please let me know if you can't go. Um, it looks like... You know, it might take a few hours to, to navigate the uh, 508 properties. So um, please let me know if you can't attend or who can't attend. And we have a couple other site visits, and I'll try to uh, accommodate that around people's schedules. Um, I was going to give you a Pine Lake summary, but we just did that under enforcement order. Uh, pilot project is underway. I was back out there today to go over things we'll be getting monitoring reports starting next week for that site i was going to tell you about the mass dot site visit but i already did that and that's all right the building yeah. pilot already down the restaurant building uh yes yep yeah, yeah they're demolishing yep. it right now yep by a motion hang on becky i won't be available <laughs> for the site visits on the 25th Okay, thank you. Yep. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Eric, yeah, hold a second. second. Eric, all right. All in favor? Aye. Raise Everybody your hand. In favor. Everybody in favor? David, you in favor? In favor. All right. Yep. Unanimous. Thank Good you. Everybody. Good night. Thanks, right, Becky. Thank you guys. Thanks, Holly. Good night. Good night. Jeff. Yeah. Good job. Jeff, do you have a comment?